accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, PL 1935, Chapter 231, adequate notice of this regular meeting of the Planning Board of the Township of Franklin has been provided. If everyone would please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, before, uh, Erica, Jennifer, and Maher all asked to be excused this evening. Councilman and Barson? Here. Theodore Chase? Here. Sammy Chabon? Mustafa Manzre? Here. Charles Brown? Here. Robert Thomas? Here. Rebecca Hilbert? Here. Chairman Orsini? Here. Um, first item of business is minutes from the regular meeting from May 3rd. So uh, I'll make a motion to approve those. Um, I apologize. Second. Uh, you did the first one? Yes. And Rebecca second. Councilman and Barson? Yes. Theodore Chase? Yes. Charles Brown? Yes. Robert Thomas? Yes. Chairman Orsini? Yes. Um, Move to open the open the uh, meeting to the public for any general planning comments, not the subject of one of the hearings tonight. Each of the applications tonight, Canal Walk, Franklin 27, and 31 Voorhees will have their own uh, public portion. So this is for any general planning comments. Uh, move to uh, open the public. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is now open to the public for any general planning comment. Seeing no takers, move to close. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Um, Mark, you're up. We've got a brief discussion item, which we're going to put up first. Yeah, just real quick. Um, so the, the council uh, put out uh, an RFP for uh, two different studies, uh, two interrelated studies that uh, the planning board is going to be involved in. Um, they involve basically the, the business and industry zone. Um, it's a uh, master plan re-examination of that zone, looking at the permitted uses, um, basically all of the uses that are permitted in that zone, um, and making recommendations on how um, it might be modified. Um, related to that is a traffic study, um, so it's basically evaluating the uh, the roadway infrastructure in that area, uh, anticipated traffic, uh, including an evaluation of the different traffic studies that have, that have been prepared uh, for the different warehouse applications before this board, projecting that onto the roadway network, um, and doing an assessment of uh, what improvements may be necessary to accommodate that development. Um, and that um, we, th th those were done kind of related because some of the some of the information that may come out of that of that traffic evaluation may inform uh, you know zoning and land use recommendations as part of the planning study. Um, so those um, ha have been re reward awarded to the firm of Brightview Engineering um, that just occurred within the last few days. Um, so at some point in the next in the coming months, the planning board will start uh, being involved in that process. Basically, it. Thanks, Mark. So you don't need anything from the board tonight, just an inform. No. Okay. Great. All right. So we'll start with our first hearing. Canal Walk Associates LLC PLN twenty three zero 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 one seven. All right. I'm out. It's on. Yeah. Uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Jim Stahl, S T A H L, uh, from the firm of Boris Golden Foley, Vignola, Hyman, and Stahl, representing the Canal Walk Associates LLC. Mr. Chairman and Mr. Vignolo. I was mixing up the boards. <laughs> that's, you know. Oh, that's why you. Uh, that's why I'm looking at you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I represent uh, Canal Walk Associates. As you're aware, this is a <coughs> minor subdivision where we're taking a piece of uh, the improvements which are on the HOA, taking those and cutting them off and putting them on to another uh, piece of property. As I told Mr. Vignolo, and he was uh, gracious, I, I get very um, f fixated on certain things, and I know that it's going to be, no, I, 
I know it's a condition of any approval you grant for the subdivision will be that we reverse and uh, put that piece on another piece that we have. And I just reminded Peter that uh, it was not an advertised issue because it's not part of our application. And uh, Mr. Vignolo, who's well known and well versed, said not to worry about it because it's really your condition. But you know, I get, look, sometimes we lawyers get uh, concerned that we didn't do something correct. I have one witness, <coughs> Mr. Mitch Ardman. Uh, Mitch, why don't you stand, raise your right hand. Oh, uh, Mr. Uh, Vignolo, I assume I have jurisdiction. The board has jurisdiction to hear the application, Mr. Stahl. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Mr. Stahl. You swear the testimony you're going to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. If you could state your name, spell your last name, and give us your address for the record, please. First initial, F. Mitchell Ardman, A-R-D-M-A-N, 575, Route 28, Raritan. All right, and Mitch, you are a licensed New Jersey engineer, is that correct? That's correct. And for how many years have you been so... Uh, so, Mr. Saul, this board is very familiar with Mr. I Arden. know. So, I mean, as long as you're uh, in good standing as a licensed engineer in the state of New Jersey, you're accepted. Thank you. I wasn't going to go through the whole thing, Mr. Yeah. Yeah. but yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. All right, Mitch, you were engaged by uh, the applicant to prepare the plans and to be present tonight to give testimony with regard to the proposal. Is that correct? That's correct. Why don't we, uh, I was going to say cut to the chase, but Dr. Chase is here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's cut to the issue. Uh, Certainly. Go right ahead. Let's start from the beginning. Tell us what we're going to do and what we're going to end up with. Certainly. So what we have on the screen here is a, is a rendered version of our plan. That's our preliminary and final major subdivision plan. Uh, sheet MS, that's in your set, uh, revised August 2, 2023. The only change is, is the color rendering on the plan. Can you mark it A1, please? Certainly. And just so we have a proper identification, I don't know whether you said it. Yep. What is the signature block? Did you identify the signature yeah, block? Yeah, so on the signature block, this was uh, prepared at my direction by our, by our uh, surveyor, uh, Howard Lobsher, and I described the, uh, the sheet that it was. Thank you. So as described, the, the intent of this application is a subdivision to take off a piece of land off what is basically the enclave to property and to give that uh, where it more properly belongs with the uh, uh, canal walk. Uh, the issue are improvements, and basically that's the area in blue that I have on the plan here. Uh, the entire property is, is uh, bordered in, in yellow, and at the top of the plan here is Schoolhouse Road. Uh, coming down from Schoolhouse Road is Canal Walk Boulevard. We you know you've seen that this application over, over many years and many iterations. So as uh, Enclave 2 was developed, Basically, there's a pump station that's really part of the canal walk property, along with some other amenities and sidewalks and signs as you come in along Canal Walk Boulevard, and that's all shaded in blue. And at this point in time, it was the appropriate time between the uh, homeowners associations to basically make that correct and, and the items that belong with Canal Walk transfer those properties uh, so they would appropriately be on that parcel instead of the Enclave 2. Uh, so really, that's, that's what we're looking to do here. Technically, it's a two-lot subdivision. The Enclave two-lot will stay in the large portion as it is, and the blue, as I said, will be subdivided off as lot 1.01. .01. As you heard from Mr. Saul, subsequent to this application as a condition uh, suggested by your staff, that area will be merged with Canal Walk Boulevard. That's a private road. It actually has its own uh, lot number, uh, so that'll be merged uh, with that lot area. The other part of the application is the top uh, portion here, which is in green, which I'm showing, along Schoolhouse Road. Actually, originally we had that included in the portion of Canal Walk, and as was appropriately pointed out uh, by Mark, that would really cut off any frontage to Schoolhouse Road for the lot, which is not appropriate to do. So instead of that transferring to Canal Walk Boulevard, that's going to be a, a dedication to Schoolhouse Road and become a portion of that road right away. So those are the two shaded areas that I have, the blue again to the Canal Walk, um, and the green will be township dedication. And really, in a nutshell, um, that's what we're going to wind up. Lot. 1.01 .01 will um, 
will be a parcel is approximately 14,361 square feet. Um, lot 1.02, which will be the remaining enclave, will be approximately 403,506 square feet. Just to clarify several things, Mitch, no, no construction of any kind is required, is that correct? That's correct. None with this application and none pending after this. And correct. referring to Mark Healy's uh, memorandum uh, dated August 10, 2023, uh, there are no issues with regard to uh, our compliance with Mark's comments? Correct. All some technical things on the plan, we'll update those to address those comments. And I know that there was something that might have been in Mark's, uh, in Mr. Healy's memo. We'll uh, create the reverse subdivision as soon as possible and provide counsel for the board uh, with a copy of the proposed deed and meets and bounds. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Uh, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And <clears throat> just set the record straight. <clears throat> um, you referred to this as a minor subdivision, it's actually major, otherwise it'd probably be before the Technical Review Committee. Perhaps you're referring to uh, the fact that it's a, a very minor and, and technical uh, application, which is certainly true, but it's classified, otherwise we would, we'd be doing this more or less administratively instead of at a hearing, so. Cor yeah, it, correct, Mr. Orsini, and that's reflected on our, our map call. Mr. There. Chairman, this would be a minor subdivision, except that under our ordinance, if a property has been subdivided within the last 10 years, then it becomes a major. Okay. So that is really the only reason why it's a, a, a major application before you. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. That, that helps to clarify as well. Does the board have any questions for Mr. Arvin? I don't. Um, so we'll um, go ahead and uh, I'll make a motion to open to the public for any comment on this. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is open to the public for any comment on this application. Being no takers, move to close. Public? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I don't, I don't even think you need a summation, but I will let you have it if you need it. No, probably not. <laughs> no, thank I appreciate the offer. I don't want to show you down. You know. uh, <laughs> um, okay, so um, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, if I could just yep. suggest if there is a motion that it be subject to the TRC report, there were some technical things in there that the TRC had recommended. The record the applicants indicated on the record they will agree. They'll agree to comply with the terms of the report. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So I again, I'll entertain a motion that uh, for this move to approve the application. Yeah. Second. Councilman Morrison. Yes. Theodore Chase. Yes. Mustafa Mansray. Yes. Charles Brown. Yes. Robert Thomas. Yes. Rebecca Hilbert. Yes. Chairman Orsini. Yes. Thank you very much. All right. It's Another fine job, Mr. Ordman. <laughs> All right. Uh, are we ready to call the second one, Mr. Orsini? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, we are. So, oh, oh, we have a reprise. Okay, excellent. Um, Mr. Stall all night. Mr. Stall all night. Well, that, that's great. Agree. And that's great. But it's my pleasure. I, I, I enjoy having you. What? We're, um, We're having a Lanfred Free meeting? <laughs> <laughs> You know, that was almost going through my head, but I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> uh, Franklin 27 developers, PLN 230010, uh, for preliminary and final site plan for construction of a 3,487 square foot, 3, square foot uh, City MD urgent care facility at 625 Somerset Street. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I, we have jurisdiction. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I just want to... But one thing on the on the record, and we'll deal with it later on. I know there were some comments by Mr. Healy uh, in his uh, summary, and also CME. The the properties that that we're here on, my client only owns and controls that parcel where the med I call it a meta merge, and they'll brand me for that because that's not the brand. But for the medical facility, the storage facility to the rear of the medical facility is not owned by the medical facility. The, uh, the prior owner had subdivided, and so 
we are the owner only of that portion which we propose to develop as a medical facility. In case that comes up, because Mark had mentioned it in his report. Why I'm, uh, we're gonna start with my engineer, Matt, as he gets his, here's one second please so we can get our wires together. And this, uh, I was going to tease him and say engineers. Chris, do we have any other extra cables or no? No, that's okay. I had the right one last time I was here two weeks ago. <laughs> Looks like Mark's hunting for something. Oh, Mark, yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Do you, do you have another witness that, that you can start with that we maybe d don't need the computer with? And, and I might kind of throw things out of order, but we can deal with that. Yes, I do. I do. All right. Why don't we Why don't we start with that witness, and then and then when we get this technical issue solved, we'll. Here you can uh, put your. Why don't you, sit here? you you can stand here. Oh, sit. Okay, perfect. You get a seat at the main table. Sit here, brother. Please stand. Raise your right hand. State your name. Who's, who's you need your mic, Mr. Stahl. You need your mic, sir. <laughs> the engineer turned off. It's okay. I just, you know. <laughs> If you could raise your right hand, here you go. If you could raise your right hand, do you swear the testimony you're going to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. If you could state your name, spell your last name, and give us your address for the record, please. Sure. Timothy McNearney, M-C-N-I-E-R-N-E-Y. -E -E My address is 107 Hawthorne Avenue, Apartment D, Park Ridge, New Jersey, 07656. I have a seat. All right, Mr. McNearney. By whom are you presently employed? Um, Summit City MD. In what yeah. position? As the Vice President of Construction. And have you been, how many, conservatively, how many units have you been involved in? Um, over, well over 100. And that is on the East Coast, is that correct? Correct. Up and down? Uh, it's really predominantly um, New York metro area, um, New Jersey and Long Island as well. Uh, well, we all may know what a, a medical facility like this does. Give me the short. A uh, resume of what happens at your facility. So we're an urgent care facility. It's uh, essentially immediate care. Um, there's no appointment necessary or no appointment needed. Um, and it's essentially any, we treat most medical issues uh, just shy of uh, an emergency room visit. So if someone needs more care than your facility can provide, uh, do you have a, do, do they call for an ambulance or send the patient to a, a regular hospital or emergency room? Absolutely. They'll, uh, if, 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 it need, if need be, we will immediately call 911 and get an ambulance there. Um, if someone comes in, let's say, with a heart condition or something of that nature. Um, and then also what we'll do is recommend if there's further care needed after they've evaluated the, the patient, we'll recommend a, uh, you know, a specialist. And what are the hours of operation per day? The hours of operation are 8 a.m. 8 to 8 p.m., Monday through Friday, and 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., Saturday and Sunday. Uh, before I get to the employee count, uh, you, if you, have med you do have medical waste, that being uh, the sharp items, uh, uh, dirty um, issues with regard to 
band-aids and gauze, et cetera. Correct. And how are they, how are they disposed of? So they're disposed of um, properly in a, in a red, actually like a red bag that um, it's collected. And then it's um, picked up, depending on the volume of that particular site, it's picked up once or twice a week. All right, so it's a controlled disposal, is that correct? Correct. Now with regard to the, uh, do you have a, is there a lunch room or a break room? There is, there is a break room. And when, is there a, a microwave, a small refrigerator, and the ability for staff to get coffee, have a, a brief lunch, uh, things of that nature? Yes, absolutely. Now from that there may be some food, food waste, cardboard, and how is that dealt with? That's dealt with a private vendor, a third party vendor for, right. for garbage collection. And they take care of that themselves inside the building, is that correct? Correct. And what is, uh, I had asked you, at a maximum at any one time, how many employees are in the facility? Uh, I would say on average, <coughs> eight, eight employees. Um, Adv uh, please identify what do they do. Okay, so we have, uh, we, we always have a full-time doctor. Um, we have two PCRs, people that would greet you at the front desk, um, front, you know, the reception area. Uh, we have about three medical assistants, uh, an x-ray tech, and uh, we also would have, um, uh, you know, two, uh, I mentioned that, two PCRs. Um, and that, that's essentially it, the eight, the eight people. And in this facility, you can dress wounds, you can stitch, you can x-ray, is that correct? 100%, yep. And, and uh, uh, fix fractures, if necessary? Uh, well, we would set it and then send them to right, send them to uh, an orthopedist. And w with regard to your patient count, the fact that you have at least a hundred that you've been involved in, that you do have experience with regard to the interior operation, is that correct? Yes. And can you give us a, your best estimate based upon your experience of what you think the patient count will be on a daily basis? And, and I want you to use the max day, yeah. not a day that may be. I don't know if there are days that are not intense, but just give us your, your count. Uh, I would say on average we, anywhere from 20 patients a day to 50 patients a day. And is there a time of day that the count is more intense than others? Um, generally the morning um, is sort of uh, lunchtime and then early evening is where they're, they're, the volumes are a little heavier. Now the, there had been some comments in the staff reports that we received that we may be over parked. Uh, by I think 22 spaces. Do you recall that? Uh, yes, I do, yeah. And uh, you want to retain those spaces so there is no delay nor any uh, loss of opportunity of your patients to find parking, am I correct? That's absolutely correct, yes. Right. Um, just give me one second. I have to go through my mental checklist. <laughs> uh, is there anything that I've forgotten? Uh, not that I can think of right now, but... The board will, though. Exactly. <laughs> oh, sorry. How, uh, how about hours of operation? Um, they're 8 to 8, Monday through Friday. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. And 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. Okay. So that's seven days a week. 365 days a year, right? Correct. Yep. Okay. Board, have any other questions of this particular witness at this time? As a reminder, witnesses are always under oath and can be, you know, asked, recalled at any point. So if you think of something later, that's good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Howard, we were doing on our technical issue. All right. Uh, Vince, do you, uh, you're going you're to use the boards. All right, so we'll wait. Well, let's wait. He's almost ready. Okay. But you're on the spotlight now, Matt. <laughs> I mean, if it doesn't go on, what are, what are we going to say? No, there's, 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 there's no pressure. I'd have to sit on the floor to keep that court. <laughs> it wouldn't be long enough. All right. One's good now. Yeah. Get the LG logo means it works. Oh, oh good, Joe. Oh, we're 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 good. All right. Done. Well done. All right. All right. If you could raise your right hand.
Stand up, raise, uh, raise your right hand, please. Please, where the testimony, you're going to provide us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. If you could state your name, spell your last name, and give us your address, please, for the record. Sure, it's Matthew Sharro, S-H-A-R-O, at 1904 Main Street in Lake Como, New Jersey, with Dynamic Engineering. I want you to have a seat. All right, Mr. Sharro, uh, how long have you been employed? Have you appeared before this board before? Yeah, two weeks ago. <laughs> two weeks ago. And at that time, you were qualified as an engineer. I was. And I don't know whether you were qualified at that time, but you also hold a professional planning license. Is that correct? I do. And uh, you may be testifying as to the <coughs> se several of the C variants. Is that correct? Correct. And I did. Um, I was sworn in as a as a PP also. Yep. All right. I ask you to be qualified as both an engineer and a professional planner. Accepted. Thank you. All right, uh, Matt, you know the drill. What I'm going to ask you to do is uh, three things. One, please let's give us the existing conditions. Uh, two, please provide what's going to be accomplished there and developed. And number three, if the board wants us to, at the that end of that, we'll go through the uh, staff memos, uh, Mr. Healy's report, and CME. Uh, and if not, we'll do that at a later point. So go any, ahead. Just any colorized exhibits, uh, start, start them as A1 and go in sequence from there. Got it. You got and, it. And identify the, the uh, block so that we have the number, or we'll put an exhibit number, Mr. Vignola will, and then we'll, we'll know the document by its, its block. Sure. So this is exhibit A1. Uh, this is a, an aerial ex map exhibit pre prepared by Dynamic Engineering with today's date. It's essentially, essentially a colorized version of sheet two of the app, uh, applicant site plan that was, that was uh, provided as part of the application. Uh, we just added some color for the property boundaries, zone boundaries, uh, the 200-foot um, property, you know, property dimension here, as well as right in the center of the property is our, our um, property in question, our PIQ. Uh, for purposes of this presentation, north will be to the left of the page. North's a little, a little angle on this one, but I'll, I'm just going to refer to it as north to the left of the page when I say north. <coughs> uh, the, the existing property is 625 Somerset Street or uh, Route 27, um, also known as Block 163, Lot 13.01. Uh, the surrounding uses to the north uh, is the existing Wawa. Uh, to the east um, is, uh, nope, sorry, to the north is residential, and this, this, uh, ex this recently constructed um, storage unit. To the east is the Wawa. To the south is Route 27, as well as some commercial uses. And then to the um, west is Kevin Apuzio Avenue uh, with the advanced auto parts beyond. Uh, the zone, uh, this property is located in the DRCC Zone B, so not as stringent as the Zone A requirements. The existing conditions of the lot, let me try to zoom in here. So everybody gets a better idea of what's going on on the lot. It is a 23,000 uh, 14 square foot uh, lot. It's about about a half an acre. Uh, it was subdivided from the overall, um, the, you know, the all overall subdivision that happened with the approval of the quick service restaurant and the storage facility. It was a bunch of lots um, back before that project. They were all consolidated and subdivided into two lots, one for the storage facility and one for the, the, quick, the quick service restaurant. Um, as you can see, currently some of the parking lot um, and landscaping that was part of the quick service restaurant application was actually installed. So as you're working from east down into the site, you know, come off Route 27 into the, the main drive aisle to access the, this lot as well as the storage lot, you come into the drive aisle here and all of this, this 16 parking stalls are already installed. And you, ac you can actually see the entrance into the, um, and I'm, I'm not, you know, this, my cursor might be a little small here, but you can actually see here the, that the, the west side of the site, you can see the entrance into what would, would have been the drive, the single drive through lane that went around the building. The building was essentially in this grass area here. The drive through lane came around along Route 27 and back out towards this entrance. Um, so, and the dumpster pad was actually constructed too right here. So as you can see, almost half the lot was constructed already as part of this application, the previous application. Um, and then there was an access, uh, uh, out, uh, an egress only access to Kevin Apuzio Road 
um, that leads you back out to Route 27. So that's a little bit about the existing conditions. Um, and it's impor also important to note, you can kind of tell on these images, I was there today, but uh, a lot of this landscaping that was between the two sites um, that, that was approved with the storage and the, the f um, quick service restaurant application has already been installed as well um, in these I islands and green space areas. And then uh, if you've driven by, you can see that a lot of the trees were actually um, installed too in this area where they would have been in parking islands for the, for the drive through um, quick service restaurant. Uh, moving on to the plan rendering. So this is exhibit A2. This is essentially sheets um, four and eight combined uh, with an aerial background. Um, this is entitled Site Plan Rendering, provided, uh, prepared by Dynamic Engineering with today's date. Um, let me just zoom in a little bit on the property here. Ooh, uh oh. used to have the computer right in front of me so I can hit the control button. Help me work this, this through here. So, <coughs> um, this is basically just a colorized version of sheets four and eight with the landscape being added just to kind of give it some color and some pop. Uh, the orange colors are your, your proposed building, your light gray colors are your existing pavement, and your dark gray colors are your proposed pavement, and obviously the trees and whatnot are the darker green colors. So. If you if you're here for the, the the quick service restaurant, you can tell it was the zoning board. Um, it was it was very similar to the layout that would have been for the quick service restaurant. You come in off Route 27, the side street here. You come in the main access point uh, at the east side of the site. Uh, you have these existing parking stalls that were already installed. This existing drive aisle that was already installed. Uh, we are adding. Um, seven new parking stalls to the, pro to the project, two along the, or one, sorry, six new parking stalls along the, pro the project, one along uh, this, the row of 10 that was here, and then five along the, the west side of the building. Um, the building is a 3,487 square foot building. It is a um, city MD, which is permitted here for this use. Uh, there are, um, access doors at the front corner uh, up here to the northeast corner and the western side of the building. Um, so see here we are maintaining the, the ADA stall um, that was there. We're just restriping it and repaving it. <coughs> um, the existing trash enclosure, same location, except we're making it smaller. The previous uh, trash enclosure was 18 by 10 feet. We are now proposing a 10 by 10 foot trash enclosure. The reason for that is City MD, and as you may have heard from operations, they don't really, they, they don't, they have a private hauler for medical waste, and so they're really only producing garbage from break rooms and, and you know, waiting rooms and whatnot. It's nothing, you know, they're not, they're not throwing their, the medical waste, or if there is paper um, records, they're not throwing the records out there either. That's all shredded and hauled off privately. So, um, so we, we were able to make that a little smaller, provide a little bit more green space on the property. The total, there's 22 parking stalls. Yep. There was 16, we added six. There, there is no loading zone proposed for this use. It's not really warranted for a type of use like this. Uh, once they're up and operational, uh, deliveries come via FedEx or UPS or United Postal Service. There's no reason for, you know, a big loading uh, space for a, a tractor trailer. They're not getting those type of deliveries. Right. Correct. Everything will be through the front door. As far as bulk requirements um, for this project, uh, we, we meet all the requirements except for a couple yard requirements. Uh, I'll start with the first one. The first one is a uh, maximum front yard to Somerset Street or Route, or Route 27. The maximum, now we're always, list, we're always used to hearing minimums, so this is a maximum. The maximum is 25 feet. We're proposing 26 feet. The reason for that is we're kind of keeping it in the same location as the previous building that was approved here, trying to maintain that existing parking lot and those existing parking spaces. So um, 
you know, with the sidewalks and the, and the landscaping, uh, we didn't, you know, probably could push it up another foot, but just the way it all laid out, it, I think it worked out nicely, and it's only a de minimis difference from um, what is required. The front yard to Kevin Puzio Road, or Avenue uh, to the west of the site, that maximum, again, maximum front yard is 40 feet. We are proposing 56.3 feet here. Again, it's more of a function of where the, existed, where the previously approved building was um, and that existing parking uh, infrastructure that was already installed, as well as the existing uh, stormwater infrastructure that was installed as part of that parking lot. And then to the east of the, east of the building, we are requesting a side yard. This is actually considered a side yard property line, um, and that is because this, this property, this drive aisle that comes in, is actually part of the self-storage lot. So this is actually a side lot um, line, and that minimum now, back to minimums, uh, is 10 foot minimum. We are proposing 7.9, and that is not to the building, that's actually to a overhang uh, on the side of the building. So to the building, it's about 10 feet. So we are meeting that intent of 10 foot setback. As far as utilities for the project, all the utilities, um, except for electric, will be coming off this uh, shared utility uh, services that come in through this driveway on the adjacent property line. They ran gas line, they ran a water line, they ran a sewer line um, through this driveway already. So we're just tying into where the, the fast food restaurant would have tied in. Um, and then the electric service will come off a pole on Route 27, and it will be underground. As far as landscaping goes, um, and I, I hate to keep bringing it up, but we tried to maintain the, uh, the, the previously approved landscaping plan with some uh, shade trees along um, Somerset Street, some shrubs in the, in the parking island, some evergreens intermist uh, throughout, the, throughout the plan. Um, it really is, it is very similar to what was previously approved. Um, and then, as I stated in the existing conditions, many of these areas to the north of the property between us and the storage facility are already landscaped with the landscapings that were approved as part of the previous application. Uh, as far as drainage goes, uh, there was a couple comments um, from the planner's letter, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll comply with those comments. There were things such as, you know, different types of calipers and, um, doing a better job screening the dumpster, uh, as well as um, the area that has existing plantings um, throughout here between the storage and our use. <clears throat> as far as drainage goes, the existing infrastructure for the drainage for the fast food restaurant was installed as part of the ins uh, installation of this parking lot. You can see there's a little dashed line um, outlined here uh, on the plan, that is actually the uh, existing underground system that was managing, managing the increase in stormwater from the quick service restaurant, fast food restaurant. Um, so since we are actually reducing impervious, we were able to reuse that infrastructure um, with no impact on the stormwater design or the intent of the stormwater system that's already in place. Uh, we're actually reusing many of the inlets in place as well. As far as lighting goes, uh, we are lighting the site with four area lights um, throughout the site. Uh, one of the positive things about this is we used to have that drive through that ran around Somerset Street, so we were able to reduce any of the lighting um, in this landscaped area between the building and Somerset Street, Street, Somerset Street um, by, re by removing that, that drive through there. Um, so this is a nice, safe, and efficient lighting design um, for this parking lot and for this use and it meets all the township requirements. Uh, finally, we will get into signage, um, and our architect will talk a little, bit, a little bit more about that, but we are proposing three signs here today. The first one is an ID sign. This is located uh, towards the, the east side of the property um, where this main entrance to the site uh, off Somerset Street is located. It meets all the requirements of your ordinance with a 60 square foot sign. Uh, five, at five feet high and set back 10 feet. Uh, as far as the building mounted signage, so there's two building mounted signs, uh, whereas your ordinance only permits one. Um, and right, that's just a function of how this building is laid out and the way the parking was laid out already. 
Um, so we have one building sign at the east end of the building, um, basically for uh, customers or you know patrons coming from uh, Somerset Street. And then we also have one at the main entrance door, which is on the north side of the building, uh, right here where my cursor is. So and that kind of just signifies where the you know where the front entrance is. It's it's very good to have those you know the signage on the front entrance. Um, the size of those signs, they're both 96.8 square feet, uh, very proportional to you know the elements that they're on, that they're located on. And our architect will get a little bit more into that. Um, we are requesting area variances for these signs. Um, the sign on the the north side or the main entrance side. Uh, that max is 75 square feet, and we're proposing 96.8 square feet. And then on the, the east side or the side facing the, the entranceways or the, the driveways, um, that maximum sign size is 37.5 square feet, and we are proposing 96.8 square feet. So, and all the lighting will be, all of it will be internally yeah, illuminated. Um, and, and maybe I could stop there for an ask a question or two because. In reading the comments, the only thing that concerns me somewhat, and I'm sure is when you put your planner hat on, you will obviously address the, the reasoning for the variances. And in trying to cut maybe one or two of these variances out for you, um, I have no concern about the sign facing Somerset Street because that's already in compliance. It's really not, not an issue. For the two building mountain sides, um, I really have no concerns about the one facing internal to the site because it's internal. Um, you know, as long as it's not looking like you know the Hollywood sign, I, I think I think you're good. The one on the east, though, I think presents a little maybe a little more of a question for me as as what a good justification in my mind anyway would be for that, and a suggestion may be and maybe this creates another variance mark, I don't know, um, was that you could, you could do something smaller on the building, or there could be a, a monument sign at the intersection of the access drive um, of, from uh, Somerset Street and Route 20, like right where your crosswalk is, right? Right, go left. So you're pulling into the site, and let's say I want to distinguish between, um, you know, going to the storage facility and going to urgent care. Or, sorry, city MD. <laughs> um, you could potentially, um, I see urgent care just as an urgent care facility, but I realize that's a brand name, I guess. So, um, you know, you could put one like right, right where the sidewalks intersect almost, right? Or, or somewhere yeah. around where your cursor is, just to direct people to there, um, at, in which they could not miss the fact that you then have the large um, 96.8 square feet building mounted sign facing the parking lot. I mean, that's just a suggestion that has been running through my head as your testimony has unfolded. Can I suggest, Mr. Chairman, that we, uh, the architect is going to testify as to justification mm -hmm. and either other issues you, the board, wants to discuss in the area of architecture. So uh, yeah, sure. I don't want to use the word negotiate, but we can discuss, I think we <laughs> should just, no, we should discuss with the architect uh, that issue, if it's all right with you. No, I know it's fine. It, it's just that, it's just that, you know, when you come up and and knowing how Mr. Vignolo and his firm operates, they will ask you for, you know, um, justification, right? And you'll you'll probably say something as the benefits substantially outweigh the detriments. And for that, I would need some convincing that that East Mounted sign meets that standard. So I just, just as the planner, I want you to know that, what I'm thinking. But I'm perfectly fine with no, it. No, because I th the architect has some other ideas from Mr. Healy's uh, report with regard to color issues and look. So he's going to come up with a, okay. some, some responses. No, that, that, that's fine. I just, I just didn't want to, uh, you know, what I call, uh, I wanted to give you a heads up as to what I was thinking. Appreciate it. That's all I have for the proposed. Uh, let me just, um, if, you, if it's all right with the board, I would go into the, the variances <coughs> that have been described rather than wait till later. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, at, 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 before you do that, though, um, do you want to just go through, like, the staff reports, like the CME and stuff, and, and uh, anything as an engineer, since <coughs> basically all your testimony has been as the engineer? Well, um, let me, uh, and I agree. I was, you know, I wait for you to tell me how you want to 
to the move. Mm -hmm. The building design is going to be a discussion with the architect, yeah, yeah. Mr. Vincent uh, Walk. The signage will be a discussion we'll have. Uh, Off-street parking, uh, Matt will address. We also, if needed, uh, have our traffic engineer from Dynamic Traffic, uh, and then we can discuss the, the landscaping, which is item seven. We've already discussed eight and nine. So, I mean, as since you have your engineer under test under oath right now, is there anything in any of the staff reports that you would like to discuss with the board to which you cannot comply? Those outstanding matters that you just mentioned, Mr. Stahl, for those particular experts, not would not not yeah, withstand. We have Mark Healy's report to just for the record, June 29, 2023, and I think the last uh, Russo report, CME is June 8th, mm -hmm. unless it was a later one, Mark Healy. I think that was the last one. Um, that's the one I have, too. Okay. One I have. All right. Go with that. So sticking with the CME re report, we can comply with all the comments in the CME report. Okay. Uh, we have no issues there, just stormwater comments well, and any of the hear. other comments. So there wasn't, there wasn't many from an engineering perspective in there. As far as uh, Mr. Healy's report, um, we've gone through the variances. Uh, the building design our architect will take care of, the signage our architect will talk to, uh, off street uh, parking and circulation. Um, I think one of the big items was the parking between the building here, um, referring back to exhibit A2, the five stalls that were added, and the uh, Kevin Apruzio uh, Avenue. Um, so We'd like, to, we'd like to keep those stalls um, just because of the nature of the use. 22 stalls is, is, uh, is warranted for this use. Um, I don't think they could operate properly under 17 stalls. Um, but we are, you know, willing to, an applicant's willing to, you know, work with Mr. Healy and CME um, to, to better landscape this. I understand this comment. There's not much screening along this parking lot between um, the two side, you know, Summer Street as well as the Kevin Apuzio Street or Avenue. So we have no issues adding, you know, a, you know that, that screening walls, you know, fences or, or you know, whatever we, you know, whatever would help mitigate that parking at that corner. A as you saw by the um, the aerial, Kevin Apuzio isn't, you know, maybe there's some development down the line, but it's, it's right now it's a dead end street, um, and there's existing parking, you know, obviously not you know, an old site plan, but there's existing parking on the, uh, across the street that, that butts up to it. Um, you know, obviously Somerset Street, we didn't, you know, we wanted to keep this parking similar to the fast food restaurant. We wanted to keep the parking away from uh, Somerset Street. So that's why we came up with this, this design. Um, it also keeps the existing building or the proposed building where the, where the other proposed building was approved. So we kind of, we are trying to kind of maintain that same approved site plan that was there before. Um, how, how many of the 22 stalls do you uh, would think would be occupied by employees? If I may, Ms. Orsini, I'm not going to testify. The, um, Mr. McGearney said there will be eight, FT, eight employees at any one time. So that leaves 14. Uh, he's getting uh, anywhere from uh, zero to 50 patients, depending on the day. If we were to divide that by 12, uh, my math's going to be, you know, there's, there, we have more than we... Four an hour. There's, there's yeah. more, but we just think, Ish. based upon the fact that there was a fast food, uh, although Matt uses a different phrase, uh, <laughs> there was a fast food facility, and we think it's significant, as you saw from the traffic report of, of traffic, of dynamic traffic, we're, we're much, much less intense. For so sure. I, I spoke to the principal, to the construction people, and they really want to keep the 22. They, they don't want backup. They don't want, you know, people are coming in, and I'm, now I'm testifying a little. We've all, <laughs> if I'm coming in and I need help, I, I, I just want to find a space quickly. And uh, that 22 spaces allows that, uh, that flexibility. Yeah, I mean, if you were over on impervious coverage and thing, I think we'd have different conversation. But I mean, I, I I'd like to hear Mark's thoughts. But I yeah, I, I just have one suggestion. Um, well, first of all, I'd say it, it, you know this is not Mark Healy's personal opinion. <laughs> this is the township ordinance has that maximum setback requirement, and then it has a related design requirement that 
basically wants parking spaces to be behind buildings and not out front at a corner. Um, so in my opinion, and other than one other comment I had on the architecture, you know, this was kind of my main comment because the ordinance is, you know, specifically trying to, um, you know, uh, discourage that. Mm -hmm. The one thought I had, just kind of thought of it now. Don't go crazy with the tech. We don't want to unplug you. So you have five spaces here. I wonder if you could easily get four spaces if you just put them right here. Angle in. Just, just yeah. have them just like that, and then you'd angle, you'd have a little island here, and you have room for four spaces right there, and you eliminate all of that extra pavement. Uh, and I'm wondering if you could squeeze a fifth in somewhere else if, if you were really creative. So I think that seems like a pretty easy solution. A limit opens up, makes that whole area green, reduces impervious, reduces runoff, complies with the standard, and you only lose one space, possibly picking it up somewhere else. Before we go there, let's not forget, I'm going to ask for a sidewalk on the south side. I think people coming from the south there should have access much earlier to the building than shown. Yeah. So I, I will take a look while we have our architect going. I'll take a look at, at rotating those, those um, parking stalls. I see what you're saying. I think, I think we can make it work. I just want to, before we do, I want to confirm that. And then I agree that uh, we can add a sidewalk up this this driveway, up to this driveway and over. Okay, and then one of that. Or, or come off the this sidewalk here, um, that's along this, the, the west side of the building, and come out to this sidewalk along Somerset Street. Um, either, either way, you know, to bring, like suggested, rather than having to walk all the way up here and then around, we can get up. It looks like Charles. Um, so here's a suggestion for the sidewalk. Uh, you might want, to, if you yep. could just go over that again. So we could we could do re one of two, uh, bring it in along um, the roadway here and then up and around, or you know, to, rather than having them walk all the way up and around, they can come up a little further on the on Somerset Street, make the left into the site, and then walk into the main part of the building. So we could, do, do you know, we could look at both of them. Yeah, um, either or. Yeah, I, th I think this one actually probably in the end would be less I would think that your second one is probably where people are going to walk. Is yeah. the, I think people are going to be kind of well, also going towards, towards the building. Yeah, yeah. Right. plus they can go with the existing <coughs> stripe crosswalk, right, um, crossing yeah. uh, Kevin and Puzio Avenue, and then, like you said, go directly like a, a sidewalk to your front door, kind of yeah. like right into the site. Right. Yep. I, I think that would, that would make make Yeah, that's a great con that's, yeah. A, that's a great um, idea to, to add that sidewalk mm -hmm. for people coming from the west. So one other question, since I have the mic, <laughs> and I hope this is an easy que easy answer. The access drive, your site plan doesn't show the access easement. I'm assuming that access easement is in place and you have the right to use it? Yes, Mr. Healy, I've got all the, I have them here. Uh, I'll send them to Mr. Vignolo and you uh, to, to see, but I have, uh, I have a package of, uh, of access easements that we took off of the title uh, here they, you know, I okay. have them, we'll send them to you for review. Okay, and then you'll obviously reflect those appropriately on the site plan. Yes, correct. All right, thank you. I want to make sure you have the right to use the driveway you have on your site plan. <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> I do the question, with, yeah, I'll get it out uh, next week. And then I, I believe there was uh, one other comment about expanding this um, western driveway from an egress only to a full movement to Kevin Apuzio Dri uh, Avenue. Um, I, I believe uh, Mr. Healy said that didn't really have a concern there um, because of the type of use it is. The, the reason why there was a egress only here for this was because the drive through entrance was right here. Yeah, and I can tell you that um, this application came in for a pre-application before they formally submitted. Um, and this issue was discussed by the different town members of the TRC. Uh, and there was not a, a concern on the part of the TRC because of the significantly reduced amount of traffic um, and the fact that the, the drive, the uh, fast food place had a drive through. So we really, the, tier, the staff did not want to have 
um, it was going to cause a, a real, you know, traffic situation as far as having a fast food drive through mm -hmm. and having people trying to get in there. That all goes away with this type of use. Yeah. Sounds good. I don't think we need to worry about uh, drive throughs Maybe like Star Trek, some years, you know, <laughs> the next millennium will have that. Uh, is it all right now, Mr. Chairman, that uh, Matt just discussed the variances so I don't forget and we close that point? All right, Matt, you, uh, you've, you are a, uh, a PP. Will you please give us the justification and the positive and negative criteria? Thank you. Sure. So uh, I believe that these are C and it's kind of weird because you haven't seen the signs yet, but we'll try to get through it. <laughs> um, I believe that these are uh, C2 um, variances where um, the board can approve relief when the proposal advances the purposes of the MUL, MLUL and the benefits substantially outweigh uh, the detriments. Um, so in this case, the benefits of the proposal include, included that the project is carrying out the intention of the Renaissance commercial zone. Um, the purposes uh, and the MUL, MLUL uh, a, promote the appropriate use of land, B, provide sufficient locations of commercial uses for the residents, and I, promote a desirable visual, visual, visual environment. Um, when it comes to A, um, obviously this is a good use of land. It's permitted on this, on this property. Um, it's, it's warranted for this area. There is no urgent cares um, in this area. Um, <coughs> so that's a, you know, that's a good location as well for the residents. Uh, for purpose G, and then for purpose I, um, the visual environment, and our architect will get into this a little bit more on some of the changes that have been discussed um, along this corridor. So going from a approved fast food drive-through uh, to this type of use, where we have you know landscaping along Somerset Street, um, uh, you know, in my in my opinion, um, minimal uh, compliant ID sign along Somerset Street. Uh, I think that this visually is a better alternative than the approved drive through As far as the negative criteria, um, I find that there is no substantial detriment to the public good uh, by approving this. Um, it, the benefit, the public benefits from redevelopment of the approved fast food, um, like I said, it's a good use for this area. It's permitted use for this area. Um, it's con it was contemplated for this area. Um, there is no urgent cares around here. Um, for the growing population that's here. Um, so I, I find that there is no detriment to the zone plan because of those reasons. <clears throat> and then in summary, um, the, you know, I find that the applicant qualifies for the subject for this variance. Um, for the variances tonight, the setback variances and the signage variances. Again, it's hard to describe the signage variances because you haven't seen them yet. Um, but I do feel that they're very proportional to the building. I do feel that um, one is warranted above the main entrance, as well as one um, facing Somerset Street or oncoming traffic from Somerset Street. Um, and then the front yard variances are, are de minimis um, based on the, the, the other uses in the area. Um, so I find no substantial negative impact to the public good or to the zone plan associated with the requested variances and would urge the board to grant the relief. Thank you, uh, Matt. Uh, that's all I have, except when he comes back and we discuss uh, the park in aisle with uh, after he reviews. Okay, uh, but before we, we we let Matt go for the temporarily at least, um, <coughs> any comments as to the um, environmental commission report dated May 18th? <coughs> I will <coughs> excuse me. I will note that. Um, uh, there's a couple comments that I want to draw your attention to the requirement for uh, EV stations or, or make ready parking parking uh, pl places uh, parking spaces I, that was actually not to cut you off that was actually in my in my outline it was at the top of a page we'll, we'll include a, the one EV stall that's okay required. Um, the other thing native or native plants uh, uh, I just would say that you would work that out with your landscaping and, and um, Engineering, of course. Uh, I don't know. Anti-idling signs. You're not a warehouse. I don't. I don't think people are going to idle a lot. But how do you feel about that? I mean, just so somebody doesn't think that they're going to idle while they go get treatment. I, I would say, uh, I haven't spoken to my client. I think an anti-idling is is a good sign because you're right. Someone comes in, run, runs out, leaves a car idling, uh, brings someone in, 
forgets to go back out and leaves the car. I think, from my point of view as a, a consumer, uh, I think it's we're okay with that. Okay. You agree? Or, or your wife sends you in <laughs> when you're yeah. sick and <laughs> stays in the car and idles. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yes, that's good. I mean, those are the ones that draw most. I mean, it'd be great if you could do solar panels or something on the roof, but, um, you know, I think it's probably a pretty small facility for a green roof, though I'm sure it could be done. I mean, we had your testimony, <laughs> your yeah. application on the green roof. It was kind of a different animal. <laughs> um, I mean, solar panels are always encouraged, but, I mean, those those three things, I, I think, are... Um, you know, what, what stands out to me more than anything. Yeah, so in those three things, we have no issues going through with, with the Environmental Commission on native plantings. The EV stall, I already said that we would add the make ready, the one make ready right. required. And, the and then we'll add the anti-idling okay. with, you know, work with the engineer and, and Mr. Healy to figure out where the placement of those are, would be the best. So, so I have one question on the roof uh, design. So in the flat roof, I think there's a comment. Um, unless uh, I'll let the, the architect, architect yeah, before I'll, 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 yeah, before okay. you finish, I'll let the architect okay. take that. That's one of the elements we're going to discuss is the flat versus uh, pitched roof and why we use a flat roof. That's part of the design that he'll testify to. Turn your mic on, Ted. Yeah. Oh. Well, one thing I wondered, uh, looking at the plans, there's something marked as OCS-2 at the west end of the parking lot. And I'm wondering what it is, and I trust that it's something at surface or subsurface. So that is part of the uh, stormwater management um, okay. uh, facility that was already installed as part of the quick service uh, restaurant that was inst installed with this parking lot. So it's an outlet control structure, ah, okay. OCS. Yeah. No, but it's, it's, it's something you can drive over. Yes, it's <laughs> all, all you see is two manholes in the, in the pavement. No. I have no trouble with the parking. I, I think that for this kind of use, you, you kind of want to err on the high end because, as you say, somebody comes in, they want to park there and get into the building. Uh, and it's, it's not a place that is conducive for looking for parking nearby. Uh, and besides, probably your employees will park in those five spaces down at the end of the building. And if you have maybe sh shrubbery along the Kevin Apuzio frontage and perhaps a bit of the Somerset Street frontage, you can shield it fairly well. And the one further thing I would suggest is having, uh, I, I think the Environmental Commission also mentioned pollinator plants. Along the 27 frontage, something in between the trees, it doesn't have to be as substantial as shrubs, but you know, thing, things like uh, coneflower uh, or milkweed, you know, perennial plants that go up to maybe three feet high, uh, I think will would improve the site and it's be sort of a, a welcome bit of greenery along 27, which doesn't have very much because it tends to be built up. Uh, and I'll have some further comments when you have the architect on and uh, oh, just one thing about the traffic study, um, in case you don't put the traffic on. The traffic study states that there will be one full movement driveway to Kevin Apuzio Avenue and one exit only driveway. Uh, I, my understanding from the plans is that you're just converting what was originally an exit only driveway to a full movement driveway, which I think is appropriate, but it's something a little. That is correct. We're, we're taking the egress, the, the one way out driveway, and converting it to a full movement driveway to Kevin Apuzio. Yeah. I'd also comment that the environmental assessment that you gave us was the, that for the original uh, whole project, including the the storage facility, so it's, it's not really appropriate to what you're proposing now. No. 
and I agree with you that you know some, especially around the sign, and some of the, you know these little pockets between the shade trees uh, along Somerset Street could definitely use some additional landscapings. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just to just to pretty it up and give it a nice little natural feel through here. Uh, so I, I don't have any issues adding the landscaping into there, and I do believe that um, if we can't make this this these parking stalls along here work, that screening them here, we could definitely do a good job doing that. So. And so if you have eight employees, that's a substantial part of 22 parking spaces anyway. So just administratively, um, I particularly am not concerned to bring your traffic expert up given the use. I think it's pretty minimal traffic and we've all dealt with these type of facilities before. I'm not particularly concerned unless the rest of the board is. I would waive your traffic expert. Uh, we've had quite a build up to your architect, which we'll hear <laughs> next. Um, and and depending on what we get in terms of, I, I don't know that I don't know. If there's any well, there might be public. I, I don't know, but it doesn't look like a whole lot. Um, wh whatever time we get before nine, I would be inclined to take a bit of a of like a five or ten minute break. Assuming that you can probably do 31 Voorhees before between 9 and 10, and we're probably with that. That's what I was looking at. So we could we could kind of do that administratively. That requires. So I'll be quiet and let you get your architect. Okay. I have one one <laughs> quick comment. Um, I don't have any issue with the parking neither, other than the fact that it's in the front side yard. Um, I think it would be a really good uh, contribution to the public, though, to consider a New Jersey transit stop a bus stop on that side. You have mm -hmm. one on the adjacent side of the street, but you don't have one in the southerly direction. I don't think we have to always imagine a site where people have to drive there. Many of these urgent site urgent care facilities, people aren't using urgently. They're using as their primary care physician. And so knowing that people that work there who also visit there for routine checkups because they're concerned, uh, they could use the bus. New Jersey Transit will grant the bus uh, so long as it's approved by the municipality, and I see that being a perfect way to shield your parking. Uh, agreed, and we can. And you have a sidewalk. Yeah, I, I think. Have a sidewalk there and you have a sidewalk. Get in, so that's a problem. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I guess you, if, if the board approves that, then we take that to New Jersey Transit and request a stop at that location. Is that how it works? The municipality, yes. Oh, so the mayor and council would have to approve it. Yeah, I think so. Sure. Is it okay? I'll, I'll check with Mr. Vignolo. Mm -hmm. Make him earn his time here. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> I pick out some. Uh, yeah, no. I know, but we have, there's no problem. Because actually, uh, Mr. Brown, it's, it works out because employees can use public transportation. Yeah. And you're right, someone uses this as a primary care. He or she gets on the bus. It doesn't matter how long it takes, it gets them to a physician. Yeah, that, that's a great suggestion, uh, Vice Chairman. So yeah. I'll certainly support that. I'll take it back to okay. the council. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Great. Awesome. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Charles. Um, yeah, the architect now. Uh, well, it wouldn't be, uh, be, it's, yeah. be suburban transit. Uh, you know, you got a lot of pressure on you, guys. I know, I was going to say. <laughs> All right. A lot of pressure. All right. Raise your right hand, please. New Jersey transit side. I'll do my part. <laughs> I got it, Mr. Stahl. <laughs> I'm going to earn my I'm money. Never, yes, sir. Like, you, like you just mentioned, I need to do something. So if you could raise your right hand for me, do you swear the testimony you're going to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. If you could state your name, spell your last name for the record, and give us your address, please. Vincent Wolk, W-O-L-K. I'm a principal at Longo Architects, 36 South Street, New Providence, New Jersey. I have a seat, uh, Mr. Wolk. Uh, I don't know, have you appeared before this board before? I've appeared before this board probably four or five times over the last 25, 30 years. A couple times for a couple bank buildings that you guys. Uh, have. Would, uh, are you a licensed New Jersey architect? Yes, I'm licensed for 30 years. And your Excellent. license is still valid? Yes. Excellent. I, thank you. Okay, so what I'd like to start out with just is the floor plan first. It's, um, I don't know if this is really an exhibit because it's part of the package. You know, it's the uh, floor plan, PB1. It's well, what we want to do when you do this is to move us along. Okay. When you identify something, I think Mr. Vignola will mark it as an exhibit, but I want you to use a title Mr. Stahl, if it is something that was submitted to the board and has not been changed since submission oh, to the board, it's it's not does not be marked. You're right. I've done this before. Oh, oh, <laughs> I know. Different boards, different. So 
just to give you a little a brief description of the floor plan, walk you through the building. You come in at, like any other urgent care facility, there's a waiting area, there's a reception desk with three to four, uh, oh. three reception desks. You come in, there's a manager uh, adjacent to the reception desk, and then you head back to the eight exam rooms, a doctor's office, the medical assistance stations with the lab area. There's an x-ray room, and then there is a break room, three or four toilets, an IT room, janitor's closet, and some storage closets. So that's basically the floor plan. It's 3,400, I think, 87 square feet. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do, I'm going to go on to the next sheet, PB2, which is a colorized rendering of the, um, of the elevations. My assistant's sleeping at the... So this is, a st uh, this is the standard brand for CMD. It's usually a white ephus at the front of uh, the entry point with, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's gridded. This entrance is, uh, I believe, 24 feet high. It has aluminum, and I'm looking at the north elevation, and it has an aluminum and glass entrance doors with a suspended canopy. There is a, a, a brick section that's in the middle with uh, another fenestrate, some windows, and again, aluminum and glass. It's usually a reddish brown brick. And then at the end, there's a little higher portion, uh, about 22 feet high, that's a composite wood panel. Um, going on to the east elevation, it's almost made of the same material. It's the white ephus with, again, it's just windows with a, a canopy and a brick siding. The other thing you see there is the screen for the mechanical equipment that's on the roof. On the south and west side, as you can see, one of the things about this use, there's not a lot of chances for windows because you got the exam rooms, you got the labs, you got areas that really don't lend itself to a lot of fenestration. So if you look at most uh, of our buildings, two sides have windows, the one side and the other two don't. Um, and so that's why we end up with these two elevations that end up with, again, we do with try to do it with texture of the material with the brick and then again the siding. Um, we have an, uh, on the west side, we have an egress door, and we also have an access to the roof. Again, because of the tight site, uh, we normally would put that inside, but we don't have the room inside the building. Um, we use a flat roof because we, we do use rooftop units, and because, sp speaking with the engineer, we don't have a lot of room in the side yard setbacks for, to put any uh, condensing units. So we screen the roofs. If you look at the roof line, is actually, I think it's, 16 feet high, and then the brick line is at 20, and then we also have a screen because when you put those up on curbs, they probably get to close to being six feet high, and we have about a four-foot cover with the brick. Um, with regards to the signage, uh, we always like to have a sign uh, at the entrance and then, again, facing uh, the street side. Uh, if you look, turn on the page, I think, do you have the uh, sign? Oh. Were the signs, the signs were submitted, right? I think it's in the package there's a signage. The signs are on PB2. No, no, but the actual details of the signs. Oh, I, oh you didn't get the details. No, no detail. Okay. So in fact, that was one of our questions is that the size of the sign as depicted on there didn't look like, didn't measure out to 96.8 square feet. And uh, I have the actual, do we have the, unfortunately, I thought it was submitted with the package. I was sent it, I sent it on. Again, I didn't control the package, uh, but it does show. Exactly, that's fine. But it shows that. I don't know how we do this, because I don't have this in. Do it. Because I have a whole sign package with the details and everything that kind of clear, clears up what, how the sign is constructed and everything. And again, I thought it was part of the package. I apologize. That'll clear up as far as the signs because again, it's not, it is a pin letter sign. These are individual letters and, indiv and even the logo is individual. So even though the, the sign, you know, again, you measure it based on your, the criteria in the, on, in the ordinance, but there's a lot of open area to that signage. And hopefully here it is right here. And I guess we can call this exhibit. A, A3 and basically. Yeah, this is really helpful because I mean, as I was just telling Pete here, 
when you measure the square area of your sign, it, it might be like, you know, what the perimeter is. Right. But then you have to be a little logical about it, right? That's different than like a, you know, a, a big box sign that says, you know, we buy jewelry and gold, you know? It, it's a little bit different, right? It, right. Um, you, so that would color my, uh, yeah. And that's what, if you look at it, it's all pin letters, they're all individual letters. And, and, the, and the logo itself is an individual. So there's a lot of open space, even though you're like, you, you just had said, you know, it measures that square footage. All the dimensions here, it's th if you go by your, the ordinance, it's 13 feet three long and it's 51 inches high. The logo is 36 inches high. But I'm gonna guess if we take the open area of that signage and actually the actual signage of it, it's probably less than 50% of that area. So you're saying that the content is really not as large as it would appear based upon the dimensions. Right, because it's not a box sign. A box sign would appear bulky. Big. This is more of an elegant um, for a sign because it is done in pin letters and it's aluminum and they're individually lit. So that is the, uh, you know, my testimony. I've read the comments from uh, Mr. Healy. Um, and I don't disagree. Okay, so we're here to say that we would definitely work with Mr. Healy and working and trying to meet your ordinance with more details. And again, the only thing is that we can't actually get real fenestration to add a little more detailing to it, you know, for, but we can put some faux windows in and, and we can add, we can break up that, uh, the large brick area in the front so that the back areas, you know, or I should say the back, the front street areas look, appear more like a front than a back. Yeah, okay. yeah. No, I think I think that would be good. No, I totally take your point about you know you're an examiner and we really don't want, you know, uh, traffic passing by on Somerset Street, um, seeing what's going on. So I mean, uh, that makes sense. But yeah, to the extent that you can uh, do what you said, that that would be great. I have less concern about the sign um, on the easterly part now, um, given that I now see what the signs actually look like in the detail. I uh, I don't I don't have any concerns with that. Let, let me just, I just still want to clarify what, because mm -hmm. you're saying a lot of things, but I don't know what, <laughs> on the application you're saying the signs are 96.8 square feet. And in my report I even questioned if that was accurate. I don't know what the square footage of that is. I mean, I'm trying to do calculations on the back of an envelope as we go here. It would have been nice to know so what, you know, host, what that, they are. I don't even know if a variance is even required for the first yeah. one. And the second sign, the second sign is, is, is because you're allowed to have 75 square feet. Um, so so that, me that measures out to be, if you just go take the box around it, it's 56.3 56 square feet. And I think that's extremely conservative because I would even draw the box even a little tighter than that. Yes, agreed. So that uh, eliminates two variances. The one, well, the definitely one. the one variance. Yeah, at least the one variance on the, on the entrance, over the entrance of the building mm -hmm. is allowed 75 square feet as a maximum. Well, that would definitely reduce that. That I would mean, definitely eliminate that one. Can maybe do another calculation. I, I'm going to walk over there and I'm going to show. I'm going to show the box. And I, I guess I'll put my zoning officer hat on. <laughs> and like, this is my determination. And then the other, the other one, uh, on the small side of the building. So it's assuming it's not backlit or anything like that. There's no coloring behind within the box itself right it's, a, it's, it's letters it's clear it's letters. On, the, on the facade of the building okay yep. the pin pin mounted signs is that yes okay it's if you look at the detail basically what, the, what it calls out and again i did not prepare the signage i'm just the signage guy is not here but it's a it's white acrylic with a translucent film so that eliminates the variance for signage area, parentheses, building mounted sign facing Somerset I mean, In the Street. absence of, of an exact calculation, and we can go with 55 square feet, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming, and just if somebody can clarify, so that, it, and there, that sign is appropriately rendered on the elevations as far as the scale to the building? I think it's actually a little, it should be shown a little smaller okay. on the building. It's shown a little larger than what it is on the building. A little, okay. Yeah, but again, I didn't have, I had a 
I didn't have this. I only did the elevations, and then they, you know, and we had some previous urgent care signs. Then I got this information. Okay. Because a 96 day. square foot sign would be almost two times bigger. Right. Right. So it doesn't eliminate variance for the easterly sign, but like I said, I don't care about that now as much uh, because that is, I think, 37 and a half square feet. So you're still going to exceed that, but you're going to get rid of the variance for the one facing Somerset Street. And, and then I if I could, I know we're trying to move quickly, yeah. but um, if we can get back to the architecture, um, yeah. again, this comes from the design standards. Design standards say it need, that that the buildings that are facing the public spaces are supposed to have a finished appearance. Um, could you bring the, the architecturals back up, the elevations? Um, the so the other ones. So the larger one is what you're going to see from Somerset Street, and I believe the, the one on the top is what you'll see from Kevin Apuzio. But so, it's, so it's, those are the facades facing the street. And In my opinion, that's not a finished. You know, I think the board needs to decide. I, I, I don't agree. think it's appropriate for the applicant to leave it to me. My job is to make sure that the applicant does what you require. So th they, they shouldn't work this out with me. I think the board, if the, bo if the board is satisfied, or if you want to impose some other conditions, but I think the board needs to have that discussion. One, one thing I got to take a look at this, again, we're looking at this building f right in front of the building. Mm -hmm. You have trees and landscaping that actually help frame some of these areas of the building, which do cut down the massing of the building. So that is one thing, and, and I'm not, hey, listen, we, we agree that we should add some more detailing to this that's more appropriate, add some faux windows in, and, and then add some additional de detailing so that we do meet the intent of the ordinance. Yeah, I think I think I sense board support for that, and I would agree. Yeah, I mean, we have an um, urgent care facility in Franklin Park, one that I visit visited with my young child, and they have windows on uh, Route 27 in that building. So I don't see a reason not to have windows. There are ways to mask them so that people can't see in. Um, so I, I don't see a finished appearance as shown here. And I think there should be more windows. And I agree. OK. OK, perfect. Well, it sounds like, yeah. sounds like we're, uh, yeah. 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 We're not, we're not disagreeing yeah. at all. Yeah. And again, this is their, yeah. I mean, again, this was their stock building at the time. We did this over sure. a year and a half ago or something like that. So after I saw the comments, I was like, OK, yeah. Yeah, we can do this. Your, your attorney has a question, because he, he wants to know what exactly you contemplate the condition being, because I have to write this up in a resolution, should you be so inclined as to accept it. And um, adding more windows along the Route 27 facade is what I can write, but yeah. I don't know if that's going to cut it for you. So, um, and we've, it, Mr. Healy has indicated that he does not want to be the arbiter of the design of the building. Well, so, you yeah, know, and, and, and Mr. Healy is, and Mr. Healy is, is the interpreter and, and sort of the, the, the subject matter expert when it comes to what the ordinance says, right? And, you know, he'll, he'll know when he sees it. Um, that said, <laughs> it's not way a good way to write up a resolution. So I would say that, um, you know, subject to Mr. Healy's review of a revised architectural plan on these elevations, that we um, add a, a more finished appearance consisting of windows or full windows um, that, will, that will comply with the design standards for the, uh, for the district. And I have no problem with that. Is that and, okay? And Mr. I Mr. Mean, Vanilla. Yeah, I need to know that Mr. Yeah. Healy uh, yeah, desperately I mean, wants to do what the yeah. board wants to do. Um, you know, again, I, I think it would have been preferred if the applicant had reached out to me and staff ahead of time, maybe had some exhibits to go over with the board, um, rather than kind of doing this on, on you know, on yeah. the fly. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know. I certainly have my own judgments, but I don't know at this point necessarily if they mm -hmm. match what the board mm -hmm. intends. And you know, I'm not an architect, so, but uh, Ted is desperately trying to get a word in, so please, Ted, sorry. Now, uh, well, a place where I really think you should have a window, and a real window, is for the break room on the yes. east side. Yes, correct. And I think you, if you had three windows, and they could be, say, one-way glass on the Somerset Street frontage, you know, symmetrically arranged in the, the what's shown as the darker portion of the wall there. I think that is the sort of thing we want to see. Uh, right. uh, a, yeah. And I, the rest I of totally agree. We're coming up with a rhythm for that front, or for the Somerset Street side with some 
windows, four windows, and then adding windows to the break room. Yeah. And look, I, we, I've worked with, I have not always agreed with Mr. Healy, but 90% I have. I'm, I don't have any problem with, with him reviewing. He knows what he yeah. wants, and, and he'll work with the architect. Mr. Vignolo, the spelling is F-A-U-X, I think. <laughs> oh, thank goodness, Mr. Stahl. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and see, when it comes to giving, uh, you know, uh, the board direction, the, the professional's direction from the board, um, you know, we're not architects. Right. Uh, didn't stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Can't even pretend I'm an architect. So, uh, I mean, I can give you the gestalt of what sort of things should be. But ultimately, um, you know, I rely on our professionals to be able to know what it should look like. But I think we're specific enough tonight to get to where we need yep. to be. I yep. think so. I think what, what we're asking in the, in the end is that Mr. Healy decides or makes a decision that that side of the building meets the design standards, right? And that may or may not be what everybody on the board would love or not, but that's what we're looking for, meet the design standards. He can make that decision, and I'm very comfortable with him doing that. I've worked with Mr. Healy on two other applications when we were doing the banks, and we worked on the designs of those with him, so I feel comfortable working with him. Uh, and, and I've received more direction, and I think we also heard earlier this evening that there's going to be more landscaping along both frontages. Yeah. Okay. So sounds good. Um, in the interest of time, let's um, open to the pu open to the right, public to bring um, very quickly, major traffic. Could we oh, just circle back to the roof comment? Yes, of course. Go ahead. Um, you know, uh, it says it requires 45 degrees and you have a flat roof. Can you just talk about why? Yeah, and, and, and I had stated earlier we're using uh, rooftop units because in talking with the engineer, we don't have a room on the side yards for the, without needing a variance for the um, condensing units. But our typical design is rooftop units and we screen them all so you can't see them. And by putting this pitch roof in, it creates a hard to get fresh air in and out of those units, becomes a major design problem? Uh, the, uh, something I've seen occasionally on some plan is that you have two sloping roofs that go up and then you have a space in between. I mean, they don't go all the way to a ridge. They go up and look like a sloping roof, but you have room for your condensers in between them. We, we, we could take a look at that. Yeah, especially because all the other prior buildings have been asked uh, to comply with that ordinance. Okay, because uh, what's going to happen? As well as uh, Wawa had complied partially. That's why, you know, we... And, and just when, when you do that with these roofs and everything like that, because we do have, like, the different materials and everything, that, that's going to become more monolithic along that design with that roof. So that's a, that's a product of that. Yeah, no, I see what you're saying. I mean, all the that roof looks like a sloped roof all the way. Along. Yeah, exactly. It goes all around. It, 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 to go in and out for those two inches or three inches, it's really not even going to be show. All of that being said, the building as it's presented is not a, a front to back straight flat roof. It, it has some differences in the uh, elevation of the roof, so it's not quite the same as a as a typical flat flat roof. I'm not as upset with that part of it. But when you're ready, we can bring Matt back. As planner. That, you know, the parking. Oh, parking. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. All right, just for the record. Oh, right. Yep, right. real quick. So in talking and looking at my plans while the architecture te testimony is going on, we can flip those five parking stalls along the en exit drive there. Um, in this area, this island will become a little smaller, which is fine. And then those, you'll you'll, you'll have a your last space will be about ten feet away, ten feet away from the property line here, or twenty feet away from the actual exit point. Um, but in talking with the applicant and City MD, they have no issue signing those two or three stalls as employee stalls, because um, employees are going to park there anyway. And then they're they're in for like an entire shift, not moving their cars. So there's no no real detriment to have that car parked close to the property line there. And then we can screen this island, and then we have those 22 parking stalls um, total that we have now, 
and then we can really do a good job um, landscaping this now what would be open area. Sounds good. I think that addresses a major comment from Mark a bunch Adden. of positive head nods from the board. Yeah. <laughs> I like head nods. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Thank, Thank you, guys. Mark. Anything else from the board like that's urgent? And then I'll, I'll just want to be able to throw it open to the public and see if we can. I'll, I'll let you tell me, Mr. Saul, if we can take a break and you can finish your application for 31 Voorhees by 10. If not, we'll just keep we'll just keep trucking. No, no, I, I think, right. first of all, Matt needs a break because he's right. been, and you all. <laughs> We, we can make it happen. Okay. Um, so I'll make a motion to open to the public for any comment on this particular application. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Three, two, one. Going? No. Uh, seeing no, no one coming no one forward. coming forward. <laughs> finish finish it, Ted. Close the public session. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Summation. No, I do not need any summation. Okay. Uh, no, no, I'm good. So let me try to frame a motion here uh, with all the notes um, and from, from mental notes, which is probably the worst thing I could possibly do. Um, so I'm, I'll make a motion to approve the application. Um, the variances associated with that. Um, um, yeah. For, uh, maximum front yard setbacks, both on Somerset Street and Kevin DiPuzio, minimum side yard setback, a uh, number of building mounted signs, and um, the um, area of the sign for Somerset Street. I believe those are the ones. Um, the redesign of the parking, the addition of the sidewalk, uh, bus stop, looking into the bus stop, or doing the bus stop, however we do it with the Somerset County Transportation. Um, full movement driveway and Kevin Apuzio, fine. Um, revision of landscaping as was testified to. I'm not gonna go through all of it. Revision of facade to include um, compliance with the design standards in either uh, FAUX, F-A-U-X, windows or and if you're not having fun, why be here? Right? Um, uh, uh, you guys spelled that for me twice. <laughs> <laughs> um, or, or actual one-way windows or, or whatever you work out. Um, what else do I need to get in there? You need to tell me whether you want the roof to have O, F-A-U-X, slow, <laughs> slow proof, or if you are okay with the current uh, different of elevations on the roof as indicated. Per personally speaking, I mean, I, I I heard a couple of different opinions from the board, but I, I, I mean, without giving the direction, I would say that you have addressed that in part with the difference in elevations. And I take your point about the sort of monolithic appearance of a, a fully flat roof along the Somerset Street side being not a not a variation in design. Um, so I'm, I'm okay with that. If I'm making the motion, you don't like it, you can always... I just have a question. If for some reason, uh, well, we put in the uh, resolution a condition about the bus stop. Yeah. And I think all of us agree that was a great idea. What if there's some wild, unforeseen reason that they deny it? Do they, that's, do they that's, have that's, to come back? No, or, or no, because that's out of the applicant's hands. I, can't, I don't think that's a, I don't know, I, I'm not a lawyer either. Well, I would, but I, 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 I don't know that I can. shall make best efforts to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, for example, either if the mayor and council do not approve for whatever reason, and New Jersey Transit say there's too many already, you know, those are beyond our control. But we'll make best efforts to obtain the, the necessary approvals. So I think we all think it's a good idea. Okay. Um, the EV stall and, and um, the, um, you know, what else was in the environmental commission? I, I don't, I'm not going to go through it all. A sidewalk, we got that. Um, we, Oh, the anti-idling signs, native and pollinator species, EV space. Okay. I think that's it. Um, obviously, you're bound by whatever's in the testimony and whatever Pete um, um, writes in the resolution, which is always good. And um, so that's my motion. Second. Councilman and Barson? Yes. Theodore Chase? Yes. 
Mustafa Mansuri? Yes. Charles Brown? Yes. Robert Thomas? Yes. Rebecca Hilbert? Yes. Chairman Orsini? Yes. Thank we, you very we, much. Okay. Uh, by the iPhone clock rather than the old fashioned one, I got 904. What do you think we can do? How about five? We come back at 910. Yes. Okay.
forties. We need a microphone there. Mr. Stahl, you need to use the microphone. I would say if it's the one difference between you and Lanford, and we can say Lanford. Shorts on. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Stahl, for the record, the board has jurisdiction to hear the application. Thank you, Mr. Vignolo. You're welcome. Right, uh, if I may, I think the board understands this is a mixed use uh, development. Uh, we, it is a permitted use. I am uh, privileged to again have Mr. Sharrow from Dynamic Engineering. Uh, do you want to swear him in as a second time on this app or no? Mr. Shower, you remain under oath from your prior testimony, and I'm assuming your credentials haven't been detrimentally affected in the six minutes we sat and talked amongst ourselves. I really hope not. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> All right. That means the state's doing something, right? Exactly, and they don't usually work this late. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, Mark, let's, um, Matt, I'm sorry. I was saying, uh, Matt, just give us, you know, the normal that you and I discuss, uh, existing conditions, proposed development, and then subject to the chairman's direction, we'll go into the uh, staff reports. You got it, so I'll try to make this one quick because there's not a lot of sight uh, on this one, but I'll just give you ex the existing conditions, the proposed conditions, and we do have an architect here that's going to talk about um, a lot of the building because the majority of the site is building. Um, so we'll start with, uh, and again, my name's Matt Sharrow for the record, Dynamic Engineering, uh, 1904 Main Street in Lake Como, New Jersey. Uh, I am a PP and a PE. Both in good standing. Um, so we'll start with aerial map exhibit uh, prepared by Dynamic Engineering with today's date. This is again, we'll start with A1. This is a colorized version of sheet two that was in the site plan set that was included in the application. Uh, we just added color to the, the zone boundaries, the property boundaries, um, as well as the, the uh, municipal boundary with Franklin and New Brunswick along Route seven, uh, 27. So I'm gonna zoom in um, just to make it a little easier to read this. The, the property in question is uh, in the yellow here, um, and that is the dashed yellow line is the 200 foot um, perimeter or offset from our property line. So this property is block 119, uh, lots one through 21 and 47 through 58. Uh, as you know, a lot, of, a lot of this area has those small um, rectangular shaped lots um, so these are just, uh, you know, a bunch of little lots combined into one overall property. Um, it is located at 837 Summer Street, Somerset Street or State Route uh, 27. Um, the property is approximately uh, 1.8 acres in size, rectangular in shape. The current uh, use on there is the forklift rental and sales facility. If you've driven by, um, it looks pretty vacant at this point. There's no cars parked there and the fences are all locked. So that is a vacant use at this point. Um, uh, for this, for this uh, presentation, I will go with north to the left of the page because it is a little cockeyed here as well. Um, so north left of the page, east top of the page, south right of the page. Uh, so surrounding uses, uh, to the north you have a residential area and some open space with Gurley Avenue beyond. Uh, to the east, you have a, a residential um, use with um, Canmer. Oh, Jesus, did it again? Street, street beyond. Um, to the south, you have Somerset Street and the high school beyond that. And then to the west, um, you have commercial uses with Voorhees Street uh, adjacent to the property. <coughs> Uh, there are some pockets of wetlands on the site that's important to note. Um, we have submitted to the DEP and uh, uh, obtained our LOIs for those uh, wetlands and we are going through the permit process to fill those wetlands as part of this project. We don't see any issues with filling those wetlands due to the type of wetlands they are. Uh, so that's enough for the existing conditions because we all know where it is. Uh, Proposed conditions, and again, I'm gonna go through the proposed conditions pretty quickly uh, since most of the project is building and the architect is here to talk about the building. <coughs> so this is exhibit A2, uh, site plan rendering prepared by Dynamic Engineering. Uh, this is essentially a colorized version of sheet four in the site plan application that was provided to 
you as part of this application. Um, for, for purposes of, of where we are again here, Somerset is on the right side of the page or south side of the page. Uh, Voorhees Avenue is on the bottom of the page, west side of the page. <clears throat> Let me just zoom in a little bit on the, the good stuff here. Same mistake twice, three times actually. Um, so, let me just uh, kind of walk you through uh, what we're, what's going on here. Um, so, in the in the gray, in the in the kind of brownish color, uh, is a parking uh, garage. So it's going to be under uh, under some you know a couple floors of residential. Um, and the orange is your building um, that's visible from the from the uh, air basically. So you. Um, Again, architects here to talk about this kind of stuff. So in order to enter into the garage, you come off Voorhees Avenue, you can make a right into the garage. The garage has 119 total parking spaces in there. Um, and it's two-way travel throughout the garage, as you can see by the, the two-way arrows here, with 24-foot wide um, drive aisles throughout, making very nice circulation throughout the entire garage. Um, and then the full access um, entrance and exit off to Voorhees Avenue. And then along Voorhees Avenue as part of this project, uh, the applicant is also proposing um, seven new parallel stalls, uh, so, yep, seven new parallel stalls off the, sh off, you know, off street or off premise parking uh, with a striped area that would be used as a loading zone and I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, so that's a total of 122, 126 parking stalls for the overall project. Um, I'm not going to get into any of the, the floor area information now. I'll let, I'll let the architect um, do that. <clears throat> as far as the overall um, bulk criteria for this layout, um, we are in a redevelopment area here, so we meet all of the uh, requirements for bulk, except for one, building height. Building height is 45 feet um, permitted, and we're proposing 48 feet, so it's a very de minimis uh, increase in the building height. And again, uh, our architect will go into the reasons for the 48 feet versus the 45 feet. Um, so just, uh, let me just, all right. So at the south corner here, you have a, oh, south corner here, you have a residential lobby. Um, moving up here to the um, eastern corner, you have a stairwell and equipment. Uh, I believe this side. Again, I'll let the architect go through this. Uh, you have some equipment um, hallways, some elevator hallways, and some refuse hallways uh, at the four corners of the building. And then this long rectangular trapezoid type building um, that's between the parking deck and the Somerset Street is your commercial uses here. And that is approximately 7,412 feet of commercial uses along Somerset Street. And then uh, obviously, you know, second, third, and floor, fourth floors are your residential. Um, you do have sidewalks running around the entire property, uh, see in the, in the dark gray, uh, leading around the entire property for the pedestrians to access the buildings, access the residential building, and access the uh, commercial areas. Loading, uh, as I mentioned, there is a loading zone built into the, the street, uh, Voorhees Avenue here. This is basically used for um, the commercial uses. They can park the, uh, you know, a delivery truck can park in here, use the sidewalk to deliver the goods to the commercial uses. Uh, it's also going to be used for refuge, refuse collection. Um, so all the commercial uses along Somerset Street can walk their uh, refuse down to this area, be picked up by a private hauler. And then also the refuse area for the uh, residential is in this um, northwest corner of the building. So they can easily walk out of there, bring the, bring the refuse, the, the cans, uh, to the private hauler and have refuse picked up in this area, uh, not impacting any type of traffic on Voorhees Avenue. Um, again, there's not much site to go through here. The parking uh, as a whole is compliant with your ordinance standards. Your ordinance requires 110 parking stalls. We are providing uh, 119 internal stalls and then seven parking stalls on the outside for a total of 126. Uh, we are providing the required amount of e EV stalls and make ready EV stalls within the parking garage, as well as uh, the required amount of ADA stalls. And the parking stall sizes all meet the requirement from your ordinance. Uh, as far as 
grading and drainage goes, the site's pretty flat, so that's not really an issue. And again, most of it's building, so we're not, we're not too worried about that. Um, there is some green space here, uh, and the roof space will drain uh, to existing uh, conveyance systems within Voorhees Avenue and Summer Street Avenue, Summer Street, Somerset Street. Um, that'll be done through an uh, internal conveyance system and a green roof. So hopefully everybody, hopefully we're happy about the green roof on this project. Architect will talk a little bit about more, more about that, but that's how we plan on meeting um, the, the municipal standards as well as the state DEP standards for, storm, for the increase in stormwater. And uh, we will agree to work with the uh, CME on any of the comments that he has in the engineer's letter in regards to stormwater. As far as utilities go, uh, all utilities will be coming off Voorhees Avenue. So that's your electric, gas, water, and sewer uh, for both the commercial uses and the residential uses. Um, <clears throat> it's important to note that there is an existing hydrant along Summer Street, Somerset Street as well. Landscaping. Um, there's not a ton of space to landscape on this, but uh, we did meet uh, the ordinance requirements, and we can agree to work with the uh, with Mr. Healy and your engineer to make sure that we're doing proper streetscaping along Somerset, uh, as well as some proper buffering along the residential uses to the north and to the uh, west or east. All in all, we have 190 new uh, trees and shrubs throughout the project. That's pretty impressive considering the amount of green space we had for here. Uh, obviously, a majority of them are through your street scrape areas, um, your southern side of the building, or sorry, western side of the building, and your southern side of the building. Um, as far as lighting goes, it's a mix of lighting. There's some uh, bollard lights out here for the commercial uses, uh, internal to the, the parking area and external to the parking uh, area. We have some area lights all meeting your uh, ordinance requirements for lighting. Uh, there was one comment uh, in, the, in the planner letter, letter, I believe, or an engineer, let me just double check. Engineer's letter that we are a little over on um, the residential property line, so we will fix that and make that uh, compliant uh, illumination throughout the property. And that's really all I have. Signage, um, we'll go through the architect. Like I said, uh, a lot of this one isn't a big uh, civil, you know, site um, presentation. This is more on the architect. Apologize to her for now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, if you have any questions regarding that, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, if not, we'll well, it looks like most of what you've you've addressed any of the open areas of of uh, engineering in uh, Mr. Healy's report, and uh, I know that you had marked up for me the uh, CME report of Mr. Russo. Uh, and we, we, like I said, we, most of those comments in, in Mr. Russo's um, report are related to the stormwater. The, the roof, the green roof is new to a lot of people here, so we're working through that with, with Mr. Russo. Um, it is new green infrastructure. We would condition that you know just work like that with him. Of, of course, and, and we'll comply with all yeah. the comments. So I have a bigger question, um, and, and maybe this Mark can help with this, um, regarding your, your commercial. So historically, and even from almost the very beginning, when we had the first redevelopment on Churchill, um, we've had a hard time filling the commercial space. I mean, it's a great sort of planning thing, right, where you could generate right, foot traffic for the commercial provided by the tenants of the building and vice versa you have places for the tenants to go that required no transportation while that sounds good in theory <coughs> we've had other applications very much like this in mixed use um, in, in very proximal to this area that have asked for waivers for the commercial because they can't fill it and so I'm just sort of curious and like I said maybe Mark can chime in on this is like is that viable because I mean we have taken buildings like this that have the commercial component because that's really <clears throat> what the design standard addresses and said you know we don't care if you put the commercial in it could be all residential it's good for us right because we get more affordable as a percentage of the whole um, secondly um, you know you're not building something you can't fill so I'd just like to explore that a little bit well, I think that most municipalities that are dealing with mixed use with commercial on first floor and then residential above it 
are experiencing the same thing, and the question is how much. I mean, I was speaking with a client in another town who wanted to put a, too much, and I said, well, you, don't do that. You know, go, go small and, you know, have your concierge services for your residents. Fancy word. I don't know how to spell that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I could guess. But it, it, I think you're correct, but I don't have an answer right now. We, my client believes that it is marketable uh, with the mixed use at this time. Okay. I mean, that's, that we can leave it at that. I mean, I if you come back and say to me, you know what, <clears throat> we looked at it again and, and we want to come back um, and amend the plan to be all residential, that would not... I think surprise too many people on this board just because, like I said, um, I think the one on Churchill, the first one of the first ones on Churchill or near Churchill that had mixed use, uh, one of it I think was a Papa John's or, or pizza, and I don't even think they made a go of it. And, and if you can't sell pizza around here, you're, you're in trouble. So I mean, I, I just don't want vacant commercial um, on the first floor. Um, it's not a good look, right? Not good marketability. So just, if you think you can fill it, I, I, I can live with that answer for now, um, but just, just a food for and thought. you're right, because we don't want to have, my client doesn't want to have empty space where they're paying taxes on the space and uh, common area and other utilities, and it sits there. It looks bad for, for ramp up on the, on the residentials, and it, it, it detracts from the entire site. But let us see what uh, my client can do, and if necessary, we'll come back. Fair enough. I mean, that was really the biggest question I had about this whole plan, is just that, that macroscopic question. Right. But, but thanks. I think the, the storefronts in Voorhees Station, which is next door, it took them a while to fill in, but they do seem all to be occupied now. I was just glancing at it the last time I passed by. So it's a concern, but maybe not a Mortal concern. Yeah, maybe the maybe the ones in Churchill were a little too far off the beaten path yeah. to uh, to sustain that kind of commercial, whereas the ones Ted referring to are a little more uh, populous, a little more um, in, in a, a or existing commercial area. So, I, I mean, I, ex I accept the applicants. You know. uh, and I think a point is that the more commercial you have together, the more uh, business you attract. I mean, people go. <clears throat> one store and they say, oh, there's a store for that in the next block, and, the, and they go to that, too. And I think you're right. That that's the economic issue is that you know, that's why you see 7-Eleven. Well, in the old days, you'd see two competitors next door to each other, two gas stations next to each other, two supermarkets, because the theory is if you bring them, you bring them, they will buy. And the thing is, fronting on Somerset Street are very, very, very visible, and also probably less attractive for first floor on a Somerset Street face, less attractive as apartments. Mr. Vignola, that was like the field of dreams. You know, you bring them and they will, <laughs> they'll buy. So, so I have a comment. Uh, it's not a question, because I clarified this with Mark uh, before the uh, hearing. Uh, so the uh, RPM who is behind this ap application uh, uh, is the developer of the area, of, of the building, and I think they are uh, building uh, quite a, a number of uh, structures with affordable uh, units throughout this uh, redevelopment area. So it would have been nice if they included, uh, I know they're, they're not required to, I think it would to be consistent and to be uh, more responsible, I would have liked to see them include some affordable units in this building, especially if you're, not, if you're going to come back with uh, uh, a variance not to do the uh, ground floor commercial, oh, uh, maybe uh, we could uh, think about that. So it's a comment. I just wanted to uh, add that out. Yeah, I mean, that is a good comment. Um, you know, generally, we require 20%. I assume if you don't require 20%, then you're going to make a contribution to that effect to the township's affordable housing fund. Yeah, let, let me let me speak yeah, to that right. briefly. So, um, yeah, RPM is is um, a little bit different, uh, or, or I should say, the redevelopment area is a little bit different in, in how this works. Um, so, RPM is the redeveloper of this block as well as um, a lot of you know a lot of the blocks. Uh, 
properties surrounding this area. So uh, they did uh, Franklin Boulevard Commons, Churchill, Parkside, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of 100% um, affordable. Um, I think Voorhees Station was 85%. Somerset Square was 50%. So they've provided several hundred uh, affordable units in, in that immediate area. And the a few years ago, the redevelopment agency um, renegotiated the redevelopment agreement with them, and the redevelopment agreement speaks to what they're obligated to do in this area as a whole. Mm. Um, that agreement, which ended up being incorporated into changes to the zoning, allows a designated redeveloper some leeway on a kind of project-by-project project basis where they're not obligated to provide 20% on any particular but for the remainder of the different phases, they still have to do the 20%. Uh -huh. So it's considered more in totality than a project by exactly. project. Exactly. Okay. So and sim it's similar, um, there's similar requirements to talk about open, there's a 20% open space requirement, which they did, uh, you know, a, a little park in the Somerset Square development, uh, and the same thing with density. So there's some flexibility, again, on a, on a phase by phase basis, but overall moving forward, they have to comply with those uh, standards. Okay. That's helpful. Thanks. Good, Mr. Chairman, one question since I have the mic. Um, I, I, I believe you spoke, I don't know if it's you or maybe the architect, about there's different types of spaces. Some are reserved for residents, some are, are shared, and then I think there's a good number of EV spaces. Can you just point those out to the board? Sure. So let me just make sure I'm pointing out the right ones here because I couldn't. So for the board, so uh, as you, you can see, these ones that aren't striped, kind of closer to the closer to the commercial uses, uh, you can kind of see that they're they're not open. There's they're striping at the ends of each one of these. <laughs> so this striping says residential parking only. So this is striped for that, and then these st stalls that are at the end of these aisles and over here and then along the back of the commercial uses are not striped for residential parking only. Then your, um, these are also residential all through here. And then you have your EV charging stalls over here. These are the six that are going to be installed and then there's the 11 more, one, two, three, four, five, 11 more that are gonna be make ready for the stat state statutes. Oh, we also include no idling signs here. Does that answer your question? Thank you. You're very welcome. One of the other comments that Mr. Healy had, and I, I didn't mention it with the landscaping because there, there isn't much here, but um, I think we were lacking some qualifying trees for the tree removal plan. So we'll obviously add the, the four or five um, trees that need to be added to get us up to that. Um, yeah, I think the problem Seven is trees. whether amelanchia is a tree or a shrub. <laughs> yeah, so in the end, we, you know, we'll, we'll just comply with the, with the comment. Um, so there's uh, 16 trees being removed, which results in 26 replacement trees. We only had 19 uh, replacement trees that were qualifying in size. So uh, we'll provide those seven other qualifying trees to meet that replacement um, idea. Was there any comments you had with regard to the engineering reports on engineering issues? Nope. We, can, we can comply with everything. We can comply with everything in the engineering report. Could you tell us more about the green roof? Uh, I mean, there are different types of green roof. Are you going to have us, or is the architect going to testify to this? Yeah, so, so this, I'll, I'll hit real quick. This is a green roof for stormwater for green infrastructure. Um, so. It's, it's, there's, there's not much play with what we're doing on the green roof because it has to be used for the stormwater and the green infrastructure, so. So it has, you know, it's, it's green with the medium underneath. Um, it, it's, it's pretty new stuff. For yeah, CME disagrees with your, uh, get what it's called, but the, the where the water, Yeah, we, we, we can comply with, with what the CME wants. It's not, it's not an issue. I think you um, might have the same comment for the warehouse. Yeah. It, it's, it's just a, maybe a lack of understanding. We'll, we'll just exactly. It's, it's, we're working it out together uh, with CME yeah. to, to make the green roof work. 
per the per the best management practices of the DEP. No. And we have the, to get some information from the NJDEP uh, to confirm the applicability, and we'll comply with those requirements. No. We have to meet the DEP requirements for a green roof. So, so what what sort of plantings will you have? What will be the green? Uh, it, I don't know that exactly right now, but you know we, we have to plant what needs to be planted up there to make the water quality work for the green roof. So there will be a mix. It'll be a mix. Yeah, of I mean there, you gave some plants. very um, extensive testimony at the warehouse application, or, or you didn't, but the your architect, architect did, did. Yes. Um, about green roof. And I remember Ted, you didn't think it asked about some species of grass or whatever that was part of it. So I assume that applies to this green roof. Correct. Well, we well, this will be different because that one was not, I don't think was uh, doing anything for the stormwater management because it was the sedum in these shallow trays with only about three inches of, of whatever they, you call that they grow out of, not necessarily soil. Not to, uh, not to bring up the other application, but yes, you are, you are correct. The other green roof was more of an aesthetic item. Yeah. Um, so that's why there wasn't a lot of comments from CME on that one, because mm -hmm. it wasn't being used for, for green infrastructure and for uh, the water quality purposes. This one is. So we have, for, as, far, as far as planting, as far as planting medium, as far as the way it drains, we have to meet all the DEP best management practices, BMP practices that, the, um, that are outlined in the, um, outlined in the, the BMP manual. Yeah. And the other thing is that the second floor plan shows the location of the drains underneath the green roof, but the drainage plan doesn't show these connecting to uh, your drainage pipes. We, I we, mean, we I could, assume there's a way of their connecting, but the plans really ought to show it. We could, we could take a look and make sure that we show the piping network uh, on how it gets out from underneath the building um, to the different uh, discharge and tributary points. No, and I, I thought it's sort of strange that you have, you collect the water from a Somerset Street frontage and pipe it all the way around to the back corner on Voorhees, but the, the, the drains at the back deliver the water to the front to it, Somerset Street. It, it's all a balancing act when it comes to stormwater. Um, sometimes, you know, depending on where existing conditions drain to now, we have to meet um, pr in proposed conditions, um, those flows and, re and make, meet our reductions, meet our water qualities to those different tributary points. So it's just a matter of balancing that out. Um, and, and sometimes it means running clean roof water to the rear of the site so that we have, um, you know, less, less water quality going there and more quali water quality going to a certain area. So it's, it's, it's a balancing out when it comes to stormwater, and that's, that's the systems that we have to come up with. Okay, so it's a, a matter of meeting specifications for water quality. It, yeah, it's water qual and water quantity because uh, current, you know, if, if there's not a lot of stormwater going into a certain direction, we might have to send additional stormwater to where it was going originally. So, it, like I said, it's a balancing act when it comes to stormwater to make to make it all work and to meet these these new stormwater standards. But Mr. Chairman, a kind of a related question because there was a little bit of confusion. Um, in the in the in the packet here, um, have you received review reports from the county and from DRCC on this application? Because what was in our packet was for the townhouse development. I think RPM naming this development and their previous one the same name has caused some confusion amongst everybody involved. Yeah, sorry. So we have. County approval. So it's been a while since we've looked at these. So uh, we do have a DRCC letter that uh, deems us complete. Um, what do they call the project? Excuse me. What do they call the project? What did DRCC yeah. call the plot project? No. Because what we have calls it Franklin Townhomes, and it refers to. F uh, development of townhomes on four separate plots, you know, including one on the other side of Franklin Boulevard. This yeah, is yeah, an application we acted on over oh, 18 months ago. Yeah, we so we have so we'll get you the correct reports that that um, we have one dated 
uh, November 14th, 2024, 2024, wow, <laughs> <laughs> 2022. Uh, yeah. So again, this has been, this has been a, a while since, you know, we've looked at these, mm -hmm. these reports and maybe you don't have the most current ones. Yeah, well, Ted, Ted makes a good point. I mean, the, the, the DNR Canal, I was looking at it and it was like, you know, they comply and, 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 you know, present the final plans for approval. And then I noticed when Ted pointed it out that, yeah, it's for 31 for East 59, Barry, 6 Davis, 134. So, yeah. Um, and it's dated June 20, 2023. Right, which isn't which very is long ago. Um, yes. Yeah, so, 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 we, so we'll, we'll, we'll make sure we submit the, the proper letters. I can go to the DRCC. There, we have the staff report here. Um, it's it's fine. Point. I mean, yeah, everything is conditioned upon outside approval. So, of course. You know. I, and just so you know, they only had, um, they just wanted the, the notice of county and municipal approvals at this point. So, so, yeah, so that means they have to have reviewed the proper plans. Well, they I have the proper review right here. Yeah, we just don't have the proper you just don't reports. Have the, you don't have the report. So I have the review of 8, 8, 7, 837 Somerset Street, mixed-use building, um, Dated November 14th, 2022, applicant 31 Voorhees LLC. Because mm, that's not what we have. Right. Yeah, and with the aerial is proper in there. Mm. I, if you would like to take a look, I can yeah, share. No, no, on. just let's let's provide uh, the staff with the correct it's report. It's a condition. And, and, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. It, I think maybe the best thing to do is to send to Christine Woodbury Every report you have from an outside agency, just send all of them all at once, and then we can have them. Then we can make sure we have the right ones. Good idea. Sounds good. Anything else for this gentleman before we take our bring our architect up? Nothing from me, board. I Thank think well, I think we'll go with the architect, and if we come up with any questions, Matt's still in. He's not leaving. No. I'm here. All right. Aaron. <laughs> Aaron, please. Grab that microphone for me. Okay. Perfect, thanks. Do you swear the testimony you're going to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do, yes. If you could state your name, spell your last name, and give us your address, please, for the record. My name is Aaron Pumo. Last name is spelled P-U-M-O. Address is 632 Pompton Ave, Cedar Grove, New Jersey. All right, have a seat for the moment. Uh, Aaron, are you, uh, have you appeared before this board before? I have not. Are you a licensed New Jersey architect? I am. For how long you've been so licensed? Two years. Are right, your license is still in good standing? Yes. Good. Uh, have you appeared before any boards before this one? Yes, I have. Good. I guess that uh, Aaron. Except me. Okay. All right. Pull up the drawing. The floor is yours. Okay. I'll start by giving a brief description, and then I'll walk you all through the the floor plans, floor by floor by floor. Um, so we're proposing a four-story mixed-use building here with 87 apartments. They're 100% market rate units. Um, as the engineer testified earlier, we're proposing three commercial tenant spaces along the Route 27 corridor. Uh, the unit mix is as follows. We're proposing studios, one bedrooms, two bedrooms, and three bedrooms. Uh, we're proposing nine studios, 24 one-bedroom units, nine one-bedroom plus den units, two, I'm sorry, one two-bedroom units, and uh, 39 two-bedroom plus den units, and five three-bedroom units for a total of 87 units. The gross building square footage is 125,716 square feet. The parking area is 45,327 square feet. And uh, right now I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and walk you through the circulation of the building and the features floor by floor. I made the same mistake. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I'm just going to start at the rear here. Um, we have some utility space at the rear of the building here. Uh, we're, there's an electric room here, 
a water meter and sprinkler room, and over here is our trash compactor room, which will house the uh, dumpsters that will get rolled out to the loading area for pickup on, on garbage day. Over here in the uh, left-hand corner of the building, there's a equipment uh, equipment storage room, which would be used for uh, site maintenance purposes. Uh, there's an elevator lobby and a stair egress, cor uh, egress core. Um, over here on the, uh, the corner of the building, this is the corner of Voorhees and uh, Route 27. This is the entrance to the building here. There's a lobby, a uh, mail package room, an elevator, a uh, stair core as well, and then uh, uh, additional lobby space that would be um, housed with furniture and, and, and lounge type uh, furnishings. Uh, here are the three commercial spaces. They each have a front entrance and then a rear entrance for more uh, utility purposes. I can zoom in and go over the um, square footages of those as well. So this commercial space is a uh, 2,185 square feet, they vary in size. Um, this commercial space is 2,982 square feet. So so let me just interdict, we can probably, don't need like that need this much, much detail. detail. Okay. I'm probably less interested in the layout of the apartment and square footage than is, is the um, exterior architectural site right? and what the building looks like from the outside and things like that. Just go right to the elevation, okay. Okay, so this is uh, this has not been presented to the board yet, so this would be an exhibit. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's maybe A3. 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 Yep. Right. Okay, so this is a conceptual colored rendering. Uh, this is taken at the main entrance of the building at the corner of Voorhees and uh, Route 27. Uh, the building's comprised of uh, multiple materials. We have a brick base. And on the upper floor, we're using a mix of fiber cement lap siding, corrugated metal panel, and a faux metal panel in a burnt orange tone. I'm just gonna go to the last exhibit on this. Because this calls out the certain materials in the, um, in the corner here. So again, the, the brick base, there's three different tones of fiber cement siding, one in a gray tone, off-white, slash beige, and a, a wood tone in a brownish color. This is the faux metal panel in a burnt orange color, and then the corrugated metal panel in, in a dark gray. And I, I, it's my opinion that these proposed finish colors coincide with the design requirements uh, in the ordinance. Can you use a mic? <laughs> On my neck. Uh, we're going to go through some of the comments of Mr. Healy, uh, his report. And um, the we understand that the utilities will be underground. We understand that. Is that correct? That's correct. And the garbage from the residential, are there going to be gar garbage chutes on each floor? There will be, yes. And the uh, refuse, the space in the front of the building, for um, refuse collection, is that correct? Are you referring to the commercial space? Yes. Yes, they have their own refuse area. And uh, how is the garbage going to be collected for the residential space? I'm just going to go to the uh, upper floor plan so I can show you where the uh, trash chute is located. So on each floor, there's a uh, trash refuse room, which has a trash chute. The residents would walk their garbage to this room, drop it in the chute, and then it would go down to the uh, trash compactor room, get compacted in a dumpster. The dumpster would get rolled out to the street here in this loading area for pickup on, uh, on garbage day. Okay, and now that the board would also like to hear from you with regard to uh, streetscape sidewalk requirements, including bicycle racks uh, and planters and other uh, architectural features. Sure. Um, this plan shows uh, three different 
types of streetscape items. Um, we have a bike rack here on the, uh, the in inside of the parking garage. The little circles around the plan on the ground floor are uh, refuse containers. And then the, uh, the gray rectangles along the site or along the streetscape here are, uh, are benches. There's one proposed at the, uh, the main entrance. And then the rear of the building along the sidewalk here, we also have refuse containers and benches proposed as well. <coughs> All right, and uh, I'm, I'm going to try and focus in with Abbott Shero's help, unfortunately, on some of the, uh, are you familiar with the CME report dated July 25, 2023? I am. All right, and um, with regard to that, there are certain architectural questions. Uh, have you reviewed those? I have. And are there any of those issues which we cannot comply with? No, we can comply. I don't know what other um, issues we would have to address. Uh, no, I don't want to waste the board's time, and I would look for Mr. Healy if he has any comments that he wants addressed. Uh, I think, I mean, do you have other elevations to show the board? I, think I just have, uh, <clears throat> I have a, a bird's eye view that kind of explains the, the, the building massing pretty well. Um, A4 on A5. that, or A5? Yeah. 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 Mr. Chairman, he won't correct you, but he'll correct me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the I think he's still lucky, yeah. again. <laughs> so, so this is a bird's eye view of the proposed building. This corner right here is what you just saw in the, the other street, street view rendering. Uh, as you can see here in the middle, this is the proposed green roof that the engineer was just discussing earlier. This uh, piece in the middle here is an amenity space. It's a fitness room and a lounge for the residents, so they get to look out uh, onto the, uh, the green roof. And then the building is a C shape, so it, it wraps around the back here and uh, frames the green roof. Um, and you can see you know, all, the, all the materials proposed uh, that were just shown in the previous rendering. And there are bike racks, there, there is garbage disposal. Yes. Is something that shows the signage. I think there's a particular signage um, plan. Yeah, I can. I have. Um, I realized that the plans that were submitted didn't have dimensions on them, so I have them here, and uh, I can go over them. I mean, right now I'm aware of only one actual variance, which is the height. Um, Markless off-street parking yes, and attached have. signage, but I don't know if they require variances yet, really. But I'll let you tell. Okay. Uh, do you want, should I go over the signage? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so we're proposing three different signs here. Uh, the first one, as depicted in drawing number six, is a small building sign that's adjacent to the, the main entrance. It'll be mounted on the brick veneer. Uh, we're proposing 12 inch high aluminum lettering with one inch standoffs. And we're also proposing that this signage would be backlit. Um, Right now, the sign says building signage because we, we don't yet have a name for the building. Um, and so that's why all the, the signs are not specific to what it will actually say. Um, the second sign we're proposing are uh, three retail signs that's pictured in drawing number five on the screen right now. Uh, this is uh, 20 feet by one foot six high and that's the, the, back, the background of the sign itself. We're also proposing the same aluminum standoff lettering with, with backlit as well. Uh, these signs are 30 square feet. The backlit means it's like the, oh, I'm sorry, it's, it, it's like pin lettered and then there's lighting kind of on the back side yes. of, the, of the letters that project on the wall so then you can kind of see the. That's correct, okay. yes. And is there, there's a vertical sign, I believe, somewhere? Yes, I'm gonna go, uh, that's on the next sheet. Uh, let me zoom out. So this is also uh, at the main entrance of the building, but it's a little more prominent. Um, this is for the, uh, the building itself, not the retail. And this is, I think it's 39 foot eight. I can't read that from here. 39 foot eight by three foot. And that dimension's taken to the fin, the, the top of this architectural element. Um, that's not dimensioning the actual, the lettering itself. Um, you can actually see this on one of the renderings. I'm just gonna pull up. That's this sign here. 
So the reason I ask you to show that is that the way that the design standards or the ordinance works for, for this district is that um, the board, when you're presented with a sign plan, typically our ordinance doesn't really address a vertical sign like that. Um, but uh, the ordinance basically allows the board to approve a sign plan for a particular building if you feel it, it um, is appropriate and consistent with the architectural approach of, of the building. I mean, if that drawing is is accurate, it looks to scale. Um, I don't, I don't have it. it, it is it to scale, Aaron? It's it to scale, doesn't look yes. egregious in any way to me. I mean, it seems to match the architectural. I, I'm seeing other vertical yeah. Yeah. elements going down the street, and that seems to kind of match yeah. that same. You can see it well in this bird's eye view. Uh, here's the the sign, and then here's additional <coughs> three dimensional fins that come come down from the roof and wrap wrap down the uh, the building. So the the sign is replicating that and and blending in nicely with the. Now the, the other chairman features. did remind me uh, there is uh, some people call them variances. I usually call them deviations and uh, redevelopment zones, but. Let's call it an, a, 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 an ordinance or a variation, and that's height, is that correct? That's correct. I want you to explain to the board why we need the height variance. Sure. I'm just going to go to the elevation so I can speak to some dimensions. Okay. So we are following under the uh, design requirements, there's a section uh, letter E, story height variety, and that lists certain floor to floor heights that are uh, required in the ordinance, which we, we followed. So the first one talks about the retail and commercial first floor height uh, shall be a minimum of 14 feet and a maximum of 20 feet from floor to floor. In this uh, partial drawing here, we're indicating that the first floor is shown as 14 feet from the first floor to the, uh, the second floor. Um, actually, you know what? There's a better, sorry. There's actually a better drawing. This one. Okay, so this is showing the 14 feet from the first floor to the second floor. Uh, the second part of that uh, requirement in the ordinance states that the first above ground story of a residential building or element shall be a minimum of 10 feet tall from floor to ceiling. So in this case, it's talking about our second floor here. And we're sh proposing a 10 foot floor to ceiling height. And it's actually, once you add in the floor structure, it's 12 feet from floor to floor. So we're complying with what the ordinance is stating there. And then the third part of this requirement states that the second floor shall be a minimum of one foot taller than the upper stories, which would mean that the upper story should be nine foot instead of 10 foot at the second floor. Uh, and that's what we're showing here. And then when you add the floor structure, it takes it from a uh, nine foot floor to ceiling to 11 foot floor to floor. So when you add up all those numbers, you get 48 feet as the building height. So you're, you're, you're adding the sum total of all the requirements with regard to design of each floor height, is that correct? That's correct. And the sum total is? 48 feet. Math seems to work. And then, and then lastly, can you show the board the, um, the manner in which the, the first level parking is screened? I believe there's some screening elements proposed. Yes. Okay, uh, so this um, this is an elevation along Voorhees Avenue. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna zoom in because it's hard to see. Here we go. These are openings within the brick wall of the parking area. And in order to um, add a little architectural element and uh, jazz up the openings, we're proposing to do a decorative metal screen within each one of these openings to uh, provide some visual interest and not just have a bare opening into the garage area. How do you access the parking area? 
we access the parking area through uh, an opening here. And now, I, I, a driveway. Is that shared parking, commercial and residential? Yes. So my understanding, so I was trying to figure out what what's variance and what's a design waiver where you were kind of going. Um, the only variance I see is the height. The parking, the parking seems to be in compliance with the township ordinance, but different from RSIS. That requires nothing, according to the esteemed counselor to my left. Right. And, and I, I agree. I mean, I have a traffic engineer, yeah. but but it, is it a deviation from RSIS? Yes. Is uh, it a deviation from our ordinance? No. I'll defer to our our, our esteemed I, planner I, as to what it is, because I, I think that's yeah. an accurate representation. Yeah. Uh, RSIS has a particular standard, and our ordinance has another. My understanding is, in order to completely have the ordinance apply, you have to go to the state, and they have to agree. In the absence of that, RSIS still applies. It does so you'll have a deviation from RSIS standards? No. So, but a compliance to comply with the, to ordinance. Comply with the ordinance. Yeah, you're compliant with our township yes. ordinance. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, the signage, from what I see, um, may I don't know if it requires a design waiver or not. Doesn't certainly seem to require a variance because um, I was just looking in Mark's report under. Under, in addition to site plan approval, the application provides following C variances slash relief. I see three things, but only one is sort of definitive. The others are sort of, um, it may be left to interpretation, uh, except for the RSIS we just talked about. So, in your comment five, where you see attached sign and see comment five, I don't see it. I don't see a variance there. Yeah, no, I think that was. A t I think my this was my second report, so I, it should have said comment two, where I talk about building signage. Okay. I believe. Um, um, and review that real quick. Um, yeah, so then in comment two, the last paragraph, this is what I spoke to a few minutes ago, that um, if the applicant proposes a comprehensive sign package, which, which if approved by the planning board may be used in whole or in part as a substitute for the above regulations. Mm -hmm. So there are some regulations in there that talk just like everything else about the size and the, mm -hmm. and the height and all that stuff. Our ordinance, um, I don't have in front of me, I was trying to, but sometimes it's hard to find it on your phone. Um, I know, I'm sure it doesn't contemplate that vertical sign. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, again, if, if the board is satisfied that the sign plan that's been presented to you tonight, including that vertical sign, is consistent with the architectural approach of the building and appropriate, then you can basically bless that plan and have that be the sign plan for that building. All right, so we'll consider that a, a design waiver, if you will, and not a variance. I think it would be in the design approval. Yeah. I, mean, you just, I think the no, resolution I, could I'm cite that and say that this is the yeah. comprehensive site plan, sign plan for yeah. that building. Sounds good, Yeah, I mean, which I'm comfortable with. Um, with regard to your one true variance, um, and, and not to race your architect off the stage. You mean the height? Yeah. Do you want to present your planner to just... Um, testify as to the justification for that. I, well, I, I just want to add one comment to the height right. variance. If the board finds it favorable, we'd be open to dropping the second floor to nine foot. So we would be asking for a two foot variance instead of a three foot. It's still a variance though, and yeah. it's minimal anyway. I mean, I, I'm not going to argue over one foot. I appreciate it, okay. but <laughs> it, it, doesn't, it doesn't do much. Right? I'm not sure there's a the variance, eye. but I'll bring Mark back back because it can it can't be a, like can be a variance, but you're just doing the sum total of each floor minimum consistent with the ordinance. But let me bring in Mr. Uh, Mr. Matt. Where well, let, let's call. Let, I think we have to call that one. I'll defer to to, to Pete. I think we have to call that one a variance. Well, it's 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 a deviation from the plan requirements. So actually, that are set forth in the ordinance. But I mean, I would consider building height a, a zoning standard, yeah. a zoning regulation, that which is which is we talked about this. I think in one of the other hearings, you know that that is that is a zoning regulation. I think that's a variance. Okay, right. so let's let's call the one variance in height. If you can tell the difference between a, f a forty-eight and a forty-seven foot building, uh, you're better than I. So I'm not worried worried about that, Matt. Heavy lift, heavy lift, Matt. Be careful. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, very quickly, um, this I would I would think this is a C two variance um, where the the board can 
uh, approve the variance um, with the negative and positive criteria. Positive criteria here were the overall one variance with this project of this size. Um, it's, it's, you know, I feel like the, the total package here um, is, is consistent with the Renaissance 2000 redevelopment plan, specifically the Churchill Millstone redevelopment area. Um, I think this one variant shouldn't be looked upon um, as the project, but you know, as a whole, the project meets all the other conditions. Um, as far as the purposes of the MUL, MLUL, you know, we, go, we can go through, they're, they're usually the same. Purpose A, promote the appropriate use of land, obviously permitted use. Uh, purpose E, promote appropriate population densities. You know, this was contemplated um, for this type of use, this many floors in this area. So due to the fact that we have to calculate the area the way it is, we're a couple feet over um, the, the permitted um, floor height or uh, building height. And then purpose G, um, provide sufficient space for appropriate locations for a variety of residential uses. Again, this is a, a growing residential area. I'm pretty sure you're probably going to see the same variance here on future applications just due to that calculation of the floor areas. As far as negative criteria, uh, I don't find any substantial detriment, detriment to the public good by approving this, um, this, this one variance for this overall application. Um, there is no detriment to the zone and this redevelopment plan. Uh, there is discussion of whether it's a variance or, or discrepancy. So, you know, there is, you know, I don't feel that the zone is, is impacted by this. Uh, so in the end, uh, I find that the applicant qualifies for the subject variance. Um, and with regards to the C2 cri criteria, I think the benefits uh, implementing the redevelopment plan far exceed any detriments associated with providing relief from ordinance regarding building height. So it would be your testimony to unbalance the positive criteria substantially? Correct. I, I will weigh the negative. You've right. trained me well yeah, over see? the years. You're I mean, good. You've heard it before. I have to get that on testimony. All right. Um, any questions for any of the witnesses uh, of the board? Uh, yeah, I have uh, quick questions here. Number one, you stated that you were putting utilities underground, correct? I just that was a requirement. Mr. Healy noted that in his report, and we indicated right. we're going to comply with it. Yeah, that. I just want to know how we can make that happen throughout Franklin Township. So, <laughs> however, <laughs> can't help you there. however you guys are making it happen, Mark, on this project, I would love to know because um, I think on the Hamilton Street corridor, I've been saying for years now, mm -hmm. that's a problem. So whatever happened on this one, great job. Um, I also have a question about the visual window clutter along these corridors, the amount of signage that is allowed in, in the windows in other properties. And I'm concerned that this property may do the same in the commercial and retail spaces. You can't even look into a lot of these commercial spaces. Is there an ordinance in place to prevent that amount of window clutter? There is. Signage? There is. I, I don't remember the percentage uh, offhand, but there is something in the ordinance that says that some percentage of the window, um, only up to a certain percentage can be covered by signage. Yeah, because I think um, it's like an epidemic along that corridor and other places, how much signage is in the windows. And I think it really, uh, for lack of better words, cheapens the architecture post-development of the project. So if we can get something done there, it would be appreciated. Uh, lastly, um, the colors that you decided for this site, what was the inspiration? on the colors given that they're going to either clash or complement, in your view, the <laughs> adjacent properties. Uh, let's see, I'll go to the... Beautiful architecture, by the oh, way. Thank you. Oh, we can use this image. Um, so I actually think the, the, the burnt orange brown tones complements the, the blue tones of the adjacent uh, properties, which is why we went that route. We didn't want to propose something that blended in and matched what was there. So you don't want to, you don't want a neighborhood that has every building that looks the same. You want a little variety. So that was our inspiration. Yeah, and just, you know, we have Rutgers University up the street. And so seeing the orange and blue with the Syracuse or Clemson look to it, <laughs> just, I wanted to ask where you went to school, but um, that was the only concern there. And Mr. Brown, with regard to the, uh, uh, the signs in the window, I mean, I think the board can see that this is uh, an effort to be a classy 
a, a classy look, and I don't think that the developer landlord is going to want to cheapen it, as you said, by allowing, and they're not that much commercial, by allowing the commercial to put a, all kinds of signs in the window, as we have in other parts of, of, of the township, you know, Hamilton Street, and I mean, some of the stores you can't even see in because right. there's so many signs. Right. Great. I just have a couple of small questions. Um, so the parking lot would be open 24-7 then basically? Yes. Okay. Um, and is there laundry in the building in the units or? Yes. Uh, there is. A, every unit has its own washer dryer. Oh, great. Um, and the, the stoves, are they gas or electric? They're gas. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Ted? The elevations that we have show this sort of overhanging roof just for the southwest corner of the building there, the, uh, the Voorhees uh, Route 27 uh, corner of, of the intersection. I'm just wondering why it's only there and not on the other corner. Which are, are you referring to? Which drawing are you referring to? Well, I was Is referring to the ones that we have, which are uh, yours are more like a rendering, and what we have are the ones where everything is the same size, I think. What's the sheet on number well, three? They would have that. And the, the uh, colored renderings that you have, are they consistent with your proposed architectural features they are yes for the color and everything that's there and you know we always make up these cars and people with rendering but, but what you have is consistent with what we're going to do is that correct yes The architect. Uh, did, but did yeah. we uh, deal with the environmental report? Mm. So Ted's referring to sheet A200 in our plan on the sort of the, the lower two. right of that sheet. Oh, okay. Elevation. This one. Are, are you talking about the overhang at the roof level? No. Oh, okay. Let me uh, show you on the uh, colored rendering. So this is, uh, I have the mouse going over it right now, this overhang here. Is that, that's what you're referring to? Yeah. We're also showing it on the other side as well. Um, let me see if I could find it and I can uh, call it out on the plans. Because the rent, I zoomed in again. The renderings are, uh, exact replication of uh, what's on the drawing. So, oh, this is a great elevation. This right here is the uh, the main corner rendering, which shows that roof overhang. And then on the right here, there's a dark shadow line, but this is also the same overhang. Good hey, did, did we do anything with the environmental committee report? Yeah, essentially they've uh, complied with. Uh, let me see that again. Sure. Um, you got it. They've complied with everything. Um, green roof, which is just a commendation on the part of the environmental. And I link signs, bike storage, and bicycle repair stations. I know you have bike racks. Um, I don't know what a simple bicycle repair station means, um, but. I, I we, we, we could put that in. we can put that in. Okay, yeah. good. Um, that makes things a lot easier. I assume because of the date of the report and the fact that you did not ask for a variance, but maybe we we need it. Um, but since you didn't say it, seventy-seven point eight percent impervious coverage, which is an exceedance of the permitted seventy-five percent in the zone and sixty-five percent in CMR zone. Now they they the environmental commissions. Um, Setting the wrong requirement. I think that the 75% is the 
um, building coverage. Okay. So, so, that, so the uh, 70, uh, that's all I, I, I don't know. They're that's proposing 74% and they comply. Okay. okay. Just dotting the I's and crossing the T's. That's good. I, I'm glad you mentioned because I was looking at my phone making <laughs> sure I didn't mess up. Thanks they for, don't need a variance. Thanks for pointing that out. All right. Um, let's go in, uh, given the hour, um, um, open to the public, which I don't think there is any, um, awake anyway. Um, but uh, make a motion open to the public. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone wishing to come forward? Mm. Being no takers, move to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I, I, just one comment. I didn't want you to think of the board that I, I uh, took shortcuts. We were trying to just comply with the board's efforts to get through the application <laughs> efficiently and completely, and that's why I left it to Mark. Uh, who, who normally and customarily comes up with good questions or several of the other board members, not to forget them. And I won't mention names because then I'll get in trouble. <laughs> no, no, it's good. Um, no, I think I think we did a great job. Um, and, and the, you know, the thing is, it, it is a unique, well, not unique, but it, it is an application uh, that, you know, you don't have a lot of uh, real site considerations because building takes up most of the site. It's mostly the way the building looks and fits in with the rest of the neighborhood and the uses and all that. So I think I think we got what we need. I think we all like them. Absolutely. Do you, do you, if it's you want those memorialized, you could use the mic. Yeah. All right. All right, so um, any other comments from the board? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Just a quick question. Are the, do, uh, the HVAC uh, units are on the rooftop? They are, yes. I would move to approve the application as we discussed, subject to all the comments, conditions, if there were, as, as they were brought up. Second. Councilman Morrison? Yes. Theodore Chase? Yes. Mustafa Manzari? Yes. Charles Brown? Yes, and great job considering two years in. Thank you. <laughs> Robert Thomas? Uh, yes, I think it's a nice project, and it's nice to see something that's a, a little different looking. Rebecca Hilbert? Yes. And Chairman Arsini? Yes. Thank you. I know it's been a long night for the board, and <coughs> paid, uh, we, we're, we're, we're clearing up some backlog thanks to B9, and so uh, the, the, you can take up that with Peter, but uh, yeah. And, and by the way, I love Peter. Um, don't want to, um, you know, uh, uh, cast dispersions on him. The break we had is really due to Peter because he always asked me for one around that time. Um, and so it, it's just, it became, you know, the Peter Lanfrit, you know, halftime, halftime break. Okay. Just so you know how that started. It started during B9. He's doing well. I actually had, he and Judy got COVID uh, two weeks ago. So he, it really hit him, but he's fine now. That's good to hear. But he'll be back here. I'm sure. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> that is guaranteed. Okay, that's a good All right. Thank uh, you. That's what we have for tonight. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye.